This mm -hmm. is the safe hit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. Yeah. I'm just one of four. But people went. They weren't afraid of. I mean, they were also, you, you know, fear, fear, the fear, fear. Right fear the rest the of the country. Left, you know what I'm saying? So, spots. We have two so that didn't different spots at Rick Tech headquarters. That's because we are here. On the third Wednesday mm -hmm. of the month, it is Hot Lap Pump Day. Hot Lap Pump Day once again from Rick Motek. They are the sponsor of this great event every month. Been doing it for years. Okay. Uh, and, and we are kind of Let just getting back to the again. whole uh, open house, the whole beginning, the, the origination of Hot Lap Pump Day. It was Rick Motek opening no, up the headquarters and allowing changed. their friends, family, and clients and neighbors to come in Where and the enjoy the Sims at their shop and take part in this. Out. And then we... The online community get to do the same thing. So here we are on the microphone with me is none other than Kevin Ford of Extreme Motorsports. Hello, Kevin. How are you today? I am fantastic. How are you, Sean? Great to be back here tonight with you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I missed last right. month's Hot Lap Pump Day. I was on a vacation, and this is uh, one of the first times I'm really officially back in my rig being competitive. How you so got him? We'll see how that goes. I've been away for a little while. Got to knock some rust off to get things going here. Well, I have to say, as much as we missed you last yeah. month, it was nice to see you taking a break. Yeah, it was, it's been a long time. It was a much needed okay. break. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, noticing yeah, that there's uh, around. He's having a little technical difficulties with stuff. his rig, uh, and sure Frank's actually helping him clean. troubleshoot some things and get out on track. So that's <laughs> that's <laughs> you know what I mean? Free. So uh, we have four yeah. cameras. Also, I do have I the have ability. There best. is a Don't third touch that shit, man. camera <laughs> at Rick Motek <laughs> you know headquarters. I mean? There it is. And that camera there actually, okay. whoop, it's turn that one that off. That is the All third right. camera at Rick Motek. So at times Maybe you'll switch we're... that camera over and you will see them instead of uh, Robbie. Uh, but, and we can do the same thing to cover me up as well. So lots going on. Uh, what do we have going that on? Jose, this is Hot Lap Pump Day. We're going to have two and a half hours yeah, right. i believe is on the clock uh, yep you got it yep uh where you get to warm yourself up we will have a 30 minute on, ball on, line, on which actually begins deal. in two hours and then it, you have 30 minutes to get your best lap time in and back in the beginning of time that was just sort of the end of our event but then we decided you know what everyone's here let's race so okay, GT3. we did add the all right so we go back it, where the two quick races room? uh you could Calm hit heat races. We have a uh, the select grid, which yeah. uh, uh, Kevin will let us know soon. What the select grid okay, will no, be. Okay, no, no, no. We're will good. Be the people we're good. Who make it I'm into just heat on one, this. and we'll, we'll find out whether room, all right? those drivers make it to heat two, and how much of our grid will be inverted okay. for heat two. So lots going on over the course of a few hours. Um, but the main thing being, we are here in the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car at Road Atlanta, which should be a pretty fun combination, actually. So if you would like to join us, everyone is welcome. Everybody is welcome for Hot Lap Pump Day. All you need to do is go to the hosted section on iRacing, look for a room hosted by Frank Rico, and the password, you can see it up on the screen there above the cameras, is Simpit number one. Simpit one. No number. Hello! <laughs> hello. How are you doing? I cannot quite read your name there, but hello, welcome to the show, glad you're here. And uh, now I'm going to get out on track and see how I do. And that brings Kevin or puts puts Kevin on the microphone. Now I get to kind of shut up a little bit, I think. Well, and the, 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 the best part is I get to talk and distract you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I have to spend the first amount of time just getting used to my setup. Um, again, I've been away f for a while. Oh, shit. And... I, I, not that everything on my rig is new to me, that is not the case, uh, but these are my newer pedals, which I tried out for a little while, and then had them off the rig as I was doing a different review. Oh, oh, we're going all the way around there. Talk and drive, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's get our camera over there on, uh... Oh, you don't want to give me just a little bit more time? No. Uh, no, I do not. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that beautiful bright and orange blue Porsche. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Heading, heading into that beautiful into long straightaway and possibly into the wall. Yeah, a little nudge push there. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, make goodness. a quick adjustment to force feedback. 
a little yeah, well, you, you aren't the first one who has spun out here. Jose Cabrera is out on track down there at the Rick Matek headquarters in Miami on the, one of the simulators there. He's been out turning a couple laps, getting things warmed up. Come in with a 124.183. One of the other simulators there at the uh, open house tonight has come in with a 125.153. And then the third simulator is a 131.413. About six seconds back, that could have been an outlap. That time come down, I'm sure, here soon. 2.54 miles around Road Atlanta. Bees. Wanna, oh, man, you caught a little bit of the grass there, Sean, coming yeah, up I off know. the exit. Yep. Yeah, your Ow. right rear wheel caught the grass, and then you came around and caught the grass again, and <laughs> away she went. How fat am I? <laughs> I put on a little weight on my vacation, apparently. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A little bulging at the rim there? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Uh. Oh, it's such a great track. Love Road Atlanta. What a great car to come here in the Porsche Cup tonight. This thing's slippery. It is. It's a little slick. Yep, yep. Bright blue skies. I wonder what that track temp is. Track temp. Take a quick look here. Track temp is 116. Woo. A little warm. The ambient temp's only 76, but, man, that sun's beating down on that asphalt. Oh, Brian Heikotter's here. Yep, yep. Brian Hi, here. Stepped away. Glad Brian. to have Brian back. Yeah, great to have you tonight, buddy. Evan, thank yeah, you great for to be asking. Here. Password is SimPit1. Under the host section on iRacing, look for a room hosted by Frank Rico. And the password is SimPit1. Have our eyes on Sean right now as he comes through 10 whoa. A and B. And, whoa, just gets around that Porsche there. <laughs> that was Jose. Yeah, Jose out there uh, turning some laps, trying to trying to figure out how to keep that back end underneath of him. He's, he's done a few donuts coming down the hill here. Whoa, we're going, we're going off-road. <laughs> Okay. Track was built oh. in 1969. Uh, Sean is. Uh, is it Sean? Uh, imagine, down. imagine yourself three times wider than what you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> um. Part of it is it's so terribly slippery. I gotta I gotta make some quick adjustments. I what setup am I doing here? Um, do they have one for road? Oh, I think that's what I had. Feels very very bouncy, very stiff. I think it softened up quite a bit without having right. any my pros to affect things. Uh, and fuel. Now for the drivers out there that want to come out and give themselves a, a go at working their way to the top of the leaderboard, you can join us on iRacing. We're in the hosted sessions, of course. Password is SimPit1. Look for the room hosted by Frank Rico from Rick Motek. Be named Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. Find oh, us in the hosted sessions there. Again, SimPit1, all lowercase, S-I-M-P-I-T-1. That'll get you into the session here tonight. Uh, Anders, let me see if I can get that. Uh, we changed. All right, let's see if this can happen again. Um, I changed the way whose camera we're doing. So I'm not sure if it's going to be able to because I'm not spotting myself. I might be able to trick it. Um, Anders is asking where our standings went. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And he's right. Uh, and, and again, the, the problem was that um, when I stopped spotting myself, turn that off. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. So you should be able to overlay that on, on my feed, right? Well, I used a different one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It worked really nicely for the way I used to do it. Um, 
and <laughs> two cars. Uh, let me. I'm gonna try to give me one moment. Luckily, it's just one camera you're missing when I'm doing this. Ah. Uh. Racing stuff. Bot Sean. Updates. We'll get this. Shouldn't take too long. Thank you, Anders. I guess I'll lose my spotter capability. I could turn on my, uh. Turn on my other one, though, I reckon. I reckon. <laughs> Where are you from there, son? <laughs> Brian, did we ever get a camera on you? I do. I was oh. looking for a mount uh, the other day. Oh, and did I, you find I one? Had, I had something pictured in my mind, and I couldn't find it. Uh, huh. Some kind of like, articulating mount um, for a GoPro that would be attached to like the 8020 aluminum tubing on the rig. Got oh, you. nice. But we're not yeah, quite there I, yet. Yeah, I haven't found one yet. All right. Watching Robbie Unser coming down into uh, those final double right-handers before you head back on that very, very long sweeping straightaway that actually has a, a corner right in the middle of it. Out of seven there. He's coming around turn eight, and there's actually another slight bend. Uh, you see it up the hill there. Actually, turn nine, he's approaching here. There's this little slight right as you head down the hill into that very heavy, heavy brake zone. Fast entry there. A high rate of speed down into 10 A and B. Smooth run there through A, now through B. Not taking any curb. This car does not take curbs well as Robbie <laughs> sees a couple of victims backing out of his way as he comes under the bridge there over the hill. <laughs> Robbie, uh, any past experience here at Road Atlanta? A little, a little bit, bit in uh, Corvette. Corvette, you know, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Was it the old days prior to the uh, more change? More Corvette uh, days? Yeah, back, uh, back when 10 A and B weren't there and you just went straight up the hill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yes, yep. 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 and that old. All right, so if you're watching and you want to join us, this is an open competition available to anybody out there as long as you have iRacing. All you have to do is go to the hosted section, look for a room hosted by Frank Rico, and the password, as you can see on the screen above me over there, is Simpit1. I am trying to get our standings board back on. Well, the driver in the Rick Motek 1 simulator at the open house there in Miami has come in with a 122.830. Uh, the first driver to actually put themselves in the 22s here at Road Atlanta. Jose Cabrera has now dropped down to P2 with a 123.383. Chris Generelli, great to see Chris out there with us tonight. And your number 10 coming in with a 124.994. Kenneth Jensen, Kenneth back tonight uh, for our August edition. 12 with a 125.631. Robbie Unser finds himself now all the way up to P5 with a 126 flat coming in with a 0 0.097 on last lap. Seven laps in. Uh, the Rick Motec 3 machine. Jose Cabrera's uh, driven 13 laps so far in the session, and the uh, Rick Motec 1 simulator has laid down 10 laps so far. Some drivers are really struggling with the rear end handling, but uh, Robbie really seems to have had this uh, this thing dialed in since he got in it. He doesn't seem to be struggling much, laying down some really nice times out there. Just trying to jinx you, Robbie. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I think we got it. As long as I didn't double up uh, audio by accidentally uh, by turning that on. You guys, let me know if you hear. What are you? Are sound. you hearing an echo? 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 No. Echo? no, no, no. That? <laughs> I, uh... Are you sure? <laughs> sure? Sure? Happy to Rick Motek three. Yeah, I've, uh... yeah. My my program feed is uh, spinning. Uh, if anybody else out there is having that issue, please let us know.
on out and join us here tonight, folks. We have uh, quite an exciting evening ahead of us. The beautiful Porsche Cup car, the 992-911, uh, uh, out here at Road Atlanta this evening. Hitting these uh, exciting 12 turns of madness at this place. Good golly. Thank you, Anders. Robbie has an echo. I, I do. do. It's me. me. Hello. Oh, yeah, it probably means that your uh, ninja is giving me audio, but I think I can turn it off on my end. Do you need me to go to that screen and kill? Well, tell me if you do. Oh, do you think it's, uh, it, well, it shouldn't be looping on that, uh, feed that we have, Jam. <laughs> 2.54 miles around Road Atlanta. This place is just slightly a bit of a thrill <laughs> to drive around here. 12 corners, and I'll tell you, you are on the edge of your seat pretty much every moment around this track except for that long fast or back stretch as we watch Robbie now coming into uh, 10B a little bit of trouble right in front of him there but he's able to uh, manage the traffic wisely and get up uh, uh, through the corner there that'll probably affect his uh, lap time just a little bit here but Robbie now still sitting on that 126 flat that 0 .097 no times moved on the board here in the last uh, five minutes or so everybody's holding on we have uh, uh, one uh, Michelena uh, is here with us tonight, coming in with a 131.241, driving that number 14 Porsche 911 here this evening. Beautiful cup cars, man. These things are just a scream to drive. But, Robbie, coming down through those S's, are you, are you holding on for dear life through there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. My old Let, stuck up in there. Old. Yeah, a little, little bit of pucker factor going on. Yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite tracks, Robbie. I, 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 I would put this in probably my top seven, top six or seven tracks. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just love this place. It it's a top one. To drive. The old, it's the only place that I actually do well at. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, well, from yeah. a hot lapping perspective, it's a good solo track, too. Yeah, certainly. The yeah. racing here is... Uh, yeah, you... you definitely have to have some racecraft experience to, to race this track. There's there's so many uh, uh, faculties and, and, and pieces and parts of this place that can upset the car that, that you know, if you just try to rely on overtaking in 10A, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to oh. be able to manage traffic through the S's, uh, you know, reach for those overtaking opportunities, not just going into 10A. As we watch Robbie uh, struggling a little bit there, coming through uh, 3 and 4, a uh, very difficult section to get that car to rotate through there properly and land those corners just right. It's a throw of the dice really going through there. You have to muscle the car. Damn, a 22 4 uh -huh. Oh, where, where are, are you, you at, Sean? Not sure what what, what happened. Brian's at a damn, damn twenty-two six. The There's, There's three, three of us on three of them in twenty twos. Good, Gertie. Three, three of them in twenty threes. Look at that, Evan Pikel, the twenty-two point four six nine. Wow. I mean, yep. Evans, one I of thought our I was doing good. I, I made gains. I got, gains, I got a 24, 24, and it's like, like yeah, that sucks. sucks. You'd, You'd go, go back, back to the to little girl's room. Yeah. <laughs> <your> diaper, because you... <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. Boy, that's a, that's a bit of a smack in the ego, isn't it? <laughs> Mm. Welcome wow. to sim racing. racing. Yeah, welcome to sim racing. I tell you what, it brings out the best of the best, and and uh, it sure makes you feel like the worst of the worst real quick, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I tell you what, those are some amazing times those guys are laying down in this weather. Mm. And this cup car, that's that's unreal because, I, I mean, the GT3s around here under these weather conditions, oh. maybe a second and a half quicker. Uh, so, I mean, to, to, to do that in the cup car, to pop down to a 22-2 now, Brian Highcotter going right to the top of the board. Holy cow, man. What, what setup, setup are you, are you on, Brian? Brian? Uh, it was something given to me by a friend maybe six months ago. Okay, I was going to say, don't. 
make me throw up on myself and say, oh, just a stock one. <laughs> yeah, it was actually built for this track, too, apparently, so. Yeah, well. How much wing are you running? I don't know. I didn't look at it out good in there. I mean, my tires look okay. Temperatures are all these, you know. I got to adjust him on team speed. Can you guys hear him? They, they can, can. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking, talking to Brian. Brian. Are, Are you, you quiet, quiet Brian? Brian? On me? I'm not sure. Uh, All right. All right, Sean. I muted my my ninja. Did that help? Oh my god. Nine stop off track. Nine stop off track. Nine head possible contact. Sixteen stop off track. Four stop off track. Five stop on track. So I'm at a five wing, Brian. Okay, maybe try a little more than that. I know you want a lot of wing or very little drag for the back straight, uh, but I feel like you lose a lot of lap time through the first half of the track doing that. What are you? Okay, like, what are you at? A eight, nine? I think it's nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because definitely the weekend is the back. You know, it's like you can go until the back steps out. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's still the case with a lot of wing, <laughs> but maybe less so. Well, yeah, you're also two, two and a half seconds faster than where I'm at. So, <laughs> you know, I think you get there as soon as you get up. Oh, yeah, no, there's already a significant difference in that. Yeah, wow. Oh. Might have to do something to make it turn, but... Yeah, it's like through the long sweepers. Maybe put the rear wing to it. Maybe I got to put some rear spring to it, too. Oh, too hot there. Got our eyes on Shaw now coming around turn seven to head out onto the very lengthy backstretch here at Road Atlanta. See him coming up on the six car there. We'll probably take driver's right position on him here shortly. And there he goes. He'll fly right on around that six. Hopefully picked up a little slip string there. That'll help Sean on uh, this lap time as he comes to the comes to the line here momentarily. As we get through 10A and B, we watch the six car overshoot to the brake zone there. Heading up into the sand trap, but Sean still getting a good run through uh, 10A B. Coming now up around 11, down into that uh, final corner of turn 12 here at Road Atlanta to see what he comes across the line with. Woo! Drops that tire coming off that last corner there at the bottom of the hill. John Cole coming in with a 20, 123.033. That's going to put him up to B6. 
Just behind Kenneth Jensen now. Kenneth uh, sitting on a 122.830. Sean is literally six thousandths of a second behind him. Whoa, we got Sean. Uh, Sean, <laughs> oh, you know how much that sod's going to cost you to replace all that? <laughs> yeah, luckily, <laughs> luckily we are in a sim today. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> how much fuel you figure we need, Kev? Ah, uh, well, let's see if we can get a few. I, I need to do that before we start these every time so I can help you guys out. See if somebody can give me a uh, average fuel rating per lap. Anybody out there is willing to provide me that? I'm going to guess we're probably pushing about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 gallons per lap. Rough guesstimation. All right, I just cranked Robbie up louder. We'll see if that helps you guys. Password is Simpit1. Simpit1. Andres, you getting out here too? All you out there watching, anybody, everybody, anyone and everyone is welcome to join us. We are here for Hot Lap Pump Day. That means it is the third, third Wednesday of the month. And we are here for Rick Motek Hot Lap Pump Day. You can see we actually have three cameras at Rick Motek. Um, Why is nothing? Why is my Rick Motek 3 camera not working now? Watching Kenneth E. Step in that beautiful blue and red Porsche. What a nice paint scheme he has there. Blasting his way down that straightaway, heading down into 10A and 10B here. He'll be coming in about 160 miles an hour as he approaches this entry. Heavy on the brakes, down through A. You want to take just a little bit of curve here with this car, not too much. Thing likes to get upset, and certainly coming over the crest of the hill there through 11. He can certainly dance on you. Oh, Andrews, I'm sorry to hear that. Kenneth comes to the line here. Oh, and he improves on his time on 129.398. Drops a couple of tenths there. Nice lap. Kenneth here tonight. Hey, it's to, uh, Frank, Rick Motek 3. Steps out. Oh, did we lose Rick Motek 3? Yeah. I did. Go on out here, Road Rash. Look. Right there to let him know. And you guys probably couldn't hear me because I'm on this mic. I always forget I'm on a different mic when we're on this show. This show is a completely different setup from normal, as you can see. Yes, it is, Beckley. I'm running on empty here. Hey, Dog Charlie, how you doing? So, uh, let me uh, get out of my car here and we can see what's left on the clock. So, just to let you know the format, if you're just new to the event. Again, every third Wednesday of the month is Hot Lap Pump Day, sponsored by Rick Motek. Uh, we never know the car, we never know the track. It is thrown at us last minute. You just need to adjust on the fly. But, you have plenty of time to do so. We had a two, and a, two hour, 15 minute practice session which there's still about an hour and 25 minutes left, so plenty of time to get up to speed. And then we have a 30-minute qualifying. At that point, we will restrict the field to a select amount, which Kevin has not informed us yet today. And then that group will race. And then for race number two, it will be in an inverted grid up to a certain amount of drivers. We don't know that yet. And only a certain amount from race one will transfer to race number two. So we do have sort of a qualifying to make the grid tighter and tighter and tighter until the final, final race. Uh, the races are short. They're just 20 minute or 15 minute races. So the event does kind of get real quick acceleration once we get to that qualifying time at about an hour and 25 minutes from now. And again, if you go to Hosted Racing, look for room hosted by Frank Rico. This is hit one. And I'm going to do another session. Actually, I'm going to put a more wing. I overheard Brian. I, put, I went to 10. Bit. Ten on the wing. Mm -hmm. I think I was really I'm, I'm, the wing. I mean, 
it's feeling better in places. I haven't gotten a whole lot together. All right. Try that. Um, and all we can do is raise and lower the nose. Yeah, there's not much you can do to this thing. Camber in the rear. Oh, camber in the front. Okay, well, let's try this out. Let's see how we got. Anyway, uh, you can see from the setup and options on the car, you can't really complain about the setup. It's really not a lot. Maybe a little bit of help. The wing is going to be the big one. Great balance is going to be the other. spring there's probably not even an adjustment there there's no spring adjustment uh just with the perch so you can just raise and lower the car that's it which on these bumps you can only go so low the car's already unhappy on the bumps oh i see though with that big wing though you can get on the gas in the corner I had, I had nothing but rear wheel steering yeah, no, no, this is quite, you lose a little on the straightaway, but only a tenth. And meanwhile, you're going to probably gain four or five tenths on the infield, or on the curbs. Oh, my God, I was in front of me. Batman! You are going to scream your own sound. Sure, absolutely. It's a public event. I will allow you to put a link to your stream in the channel if you have one going of this event. Give people another opportunity to try out you. Of course. I'm pretty used to that stuff. Still sketchy on tires. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is Darth Vadering? That's probably Robbie. Robbie. I That's Robbie. Tried. Yeah, yeah. Just, just getting ready to mention it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Watching Robbie now coming uh, down the back stretch. Good opportunity to move the mic. <laughs> Better there than in the S's. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? No one's ever questioned whether Robbie is breathing while driving, right? That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, I got a Rickmo Tech 2 in front of me. Well, let's see if we can scroll through the field here. Twenty-three Whoa. car there. Right, he's got a uh, big job. I'm assuming that means he's Whoa. purple low seat coming out of the pits there for his first run in tonight's uh, <laughs> August edition of the Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. Great to have everyone with us here this evening as we're chasing the leader on the leaderboard again for August of this year. Ah, uh, Rick Motek 3 is back on. There we go. There's Rick Motek 3. And yeah, I'll make another adjustment to Robbie's. I think I maybe I turned him up too loud. Sorry, you guys. On me. Put that down there. There's the nine car of the Rickmotech One machine. Okay. The old five of Brian Highcotter out there with his uh, <laughs> with his Nismo paint job <laughs> on the Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that, kind of fits, doesn't it? that is great, Brian. Oh my gosh, it it does actually. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Outfitting. Well, you still have Nissan next to your name there, Brian, I see. <laughs> Good job, yeah. man. That's brilliant. Uh, too much, too much. <laughs> Good hey, stuff. People, Brian. People have been doing that with uh, sports drinks forever, right? Oh, oh yeah. No doubt about it. <laughs> Ryan Highcotter sitting up P3 right now with his 121.934. Incredible time out there. He's going to be. Oof, beautiful. Yeah, round shot there. Ugh. 
Oh, let's see. Yeah, that is better. A 123.388. Holy cow. He goes to the top of the board by three tenths of a second. At 22, then. We have a new leader on the leaderboard here, Brian Highcotter in that beautiful Porsche. Of course, the paint job doesn't reflect that, but great to see Brian out there in that 05. Getting it done as he does, a 123.388. Going to the top of the leaderboard by three tenths of a second. Bag nabbit. I did do a event once with a real NASCAR driver guy. And uh, so we were just getting everything ready, and I'm like, hey, can I get you, you know, something Greek, whatever? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. And I go to run off, and his his uh, manager lady was there. He yells at me. What? She's like, make sure. And I can't remember what the brand. It could have been Pepsi. Could have been Coke. I can't. But it was like it was. Really it had weird. to be. It was like yep. it has to be a Pepsi or a this or an Aquafina. And it was like even the water brand. It was like, oh, okay, no problem. And right. I was like, yep. uh, you know, I was like, all right, whatever. I, I didn't. I wasn't real specific. I just said, do you want to drink? <laughs> like, like, can I yeah. appeal to your sponsor needs? But no, I mean, I get it. That's the world of uh, oh, yeah, sponsored it is. life, you know. You betcha. You betcha. Yep. Oh, you opened Pandora's box, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I should have just stayed out of that. No right, food, right. No <laughs> exactly. So I had to go to three different stores till I found the right brand. No, oh, my no. gosh, that's hilarious. I uh, love it. <laughs> By watching Brian just just hug those curbs so beautifully coming down through those S's there. And Brian uh, capitalizing on this leaderboard here. A 121.388 has him sitting at the top three tenths ahead of evan peichel evan with his 121.638 and of course aldous butelli has always been a top runner in our hot lap challenge series uh 121.899 out of aldi here this evening christian rally finds himself up in p4 now with a 122.751 we have three drivers in the 122s kenneth jensen is the next one back in his number 12 here this evening, he on uh, 122.836. And then uh, Sean Cole uh, in P7, our next driver there, trying to break his way into the 22, sitting on a flat 123.033. We want to welcome the rest of you drivers that have come out here uh, in the last few minutes. Uh, Thomas Dudek, great to see Thomas out here with us again this evening. Thomas is... Uh, Become a regular in our Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge over the last uh, uh, few episodes here. And, of course, uh, great to see Cameron Martineau. Cameron coming over from the uh, Rickman Tech Sports Car Series. Uh, Cameron uh, uh, had a battle for the championship uh, this past Monday evening. Uh, fell just slightly short uh, of the championship to... Uh, uh, or no, actually, Cameron did win the championship. My bad. That's right. I had to get that straight. I had to think about the points there for a moment. Yeah, Cameron Martineau coming around, coming away with the uh, Rickman Pick Sports Car uh, Championship in that uh, beautiful BMW M4 GT4. Uh, won that title there this past Monday. He was battling with uh, Canadian Mike Dam. Uh, for the win there and uh, capitalized on that championship, I believe, by about four or four or five points there at the end. Came down to the wire uh, this past Monday evening. Great to see David Clymer out there. And, of course, my always uh, uh, repeated joke of David, he's climbing up the leaderboard there. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Clymer. And he is working his way up in that number 242 uh, with a 123.174 sitting P9. And I know who he's after, and that's that number 39 of Sean Cole. I'm sure David's going to be chasing him down here shortly. And, of course, great to have Robbie Unser out here with us this evening, uh, Pikes Peak champion and retired IndyCar driver. Uh, Robbie, always a pleasure to have you with us here each and every month. We lost camera three again, Frank. <laughs> I'll send us another text. <laughs> it was on for a little while. I was going to go switch into shorts, but now I am over here. It's, it's cold here today. I know most of California is in a heat wave right now, but it's actually cold at my house, believe it or not. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. there's been a little bit of a uh, cold, cool front that's dropped down. It was cooler, cooler here in the Midwest uh, today. When I was on my vacation, it was like 115 the whole time. 
Oh my gosh, Sean. Yeah, hey, hey I, did, you had a good time though. Was it nice oh. to get away and be able to get out there in nature? And it was a. The uh, photos were great to see. It, you had a grin, yay by yay. Yeah, it was. It was a life-changing trip slash experience. I'll say that. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I did so many things that were like not in my wheelhouse, not in my comfort zone, and it was kind of cool just to kind of force myself to not be quite the pampered self that I normally am. So the cliff diving went well. <laughs> well, it, it looked like it was quite relaxing at the same time. It looks like you guys said uh, had a lot of fun. I don't Whether know if relaxing is a word we would have used. Right? In, were, you, were you too busy to, uh, to unwind? <laughs> too busy, too exhausted, too... Right, yeah, right. So, <laughs> quite a few twos in this case. All right, we're going to give Frank Rico's car a little heat. Oh, but let's not rear-end him. Oh, he's going around. Oh, and I helped him. He was going anyway. We see who did it. Oh, okay. what was that camera three? 68 car there, getting oh. a little wide off, coming off a of seven there. 23, 23, uh, really trying to get uh, get that car underneath him there. Still struggling to get his first lap time on the board here this evening. The 19 now, the 19 is... Uh, Fairly well, Thomas Dudek. Great to have Thomas out. He's uh, obviously a regular in the Hot Lap Pump Day Challenge. Each and every month out here in that. 124 flat is what he's sitting on. He plows heavily down into that 10A, 10B. It's a nice run through there. Really smooth entry. About a 11 now. Diving down into 12. He's got a car loose right in front of him. They are going to collide. Oh, my gosh. Thomas just takes quite the end over end roll all the way up into the retaining wall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, miraculously, he's back in a new car, and he seems healthy and fine. That is just great. <laughs> Got to love sim racing. Love it. Back to that is, 10 uh, car. Nathan Nicholson one of your guys? Nathan Nicholson is one of our guys, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden I got this red Porsche. He's 25th on the board, but I'm like, wow, he's even pretty fast for 25th on the board. Yeah, it won't take him long. Yeah, yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be getting up there soon. <laughs> uh, watching the 10 car, Chris Generelli there and that beautiful red and black paint job. Man, that is sharp looking. That uh, that flat cherry red, dark dark red look, boy, that is beautiful. Of that And scheme. I keep going wide off of that final corner. I'm missing a few marks here still. This is a tricky car, fun tricky. Oh no! Done that a few times. Anthony Morano Jr. out here with us tonight. Great to see him. He's always here every month. That number 21 car, 123.785 is what he's sitting on to, uh, currently. Right, I'm going to step away. My foot's hurting now. I'm going to step out for a moment. I'm All right, gonna, sounds good, I, Sean. I have camera three turned on, so if Frank turns it on, it'll come back on in my spot. But Yeah, I got it. My, my foot and ankles. I'm happy. On Michelin and his number 14 tonight. Yeah, no problem, Sean. Juan sitting on a 124.701 as we watch him head down into 10A. And to improve on his time, he comes in a little heavy, though. Locks up those brakes, gets a little bit of smoke off the front end. Certainly going to affect his time. Let's see what he comes across the line with here. Oh, boy, I racing. Frozen screen here, guys. I'll be right back.
All right, we are loading back in, folks. You can see that on our screen here. We'll get back into the session and things back up and rolling momentarily. Get things reloaded here. We'll have Sean back momentarily. We are in the August edition of the Rick Motek Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge tonight. We're racing for another one of those beautiful Rick Motek Racing Simulator t-shirts. We will have two dual 15-minute races tonight once we get all of our, our, yeah, our qualifying session. that will be coming up in about one hour from now. And at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Drivers will have 30 minutes to get their uh, best lap time. They will have to have clean laps, meaning they won't uh, or they cannot dip a tire off of the course in the grass or perhaps at all. They have to keep those tires between those lines on the asphalt at all times. Even coming through some of the corners, they've got to be careful not to dip the tires too low on those apexes up and off track, and that negates their lap time. So they'll have to come back around to the starting line to uh, start a new lap at that point. So, all right, here we go. It looks like... We apologize for starting on the screen there. We're a little path blonde heading down into uh, turn six there between the five and the two car. That's probably answer in that uh, two machine. Up out of turn seven, gets that back end a little loose there. car out here with us tonight. Kenneth Johnson having a nice run in that beautiful black and green portion this evening. Beautiful paint job on that car. All 
apologize for the stuttering on the street here. I'm having a little User in your channel timed out. Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> yes, yeah, a little bit of everybody. I'm trying to get it straight down. I, I think I'm gonna have to reboot. So go ahead and uh, switch off of my screen if you don't mind. Yeah, I was waiting for you to get back so I could uh, oh, take wow. care of this. All, all the Rick Lotet cameras went off. Oh my gosh, we've lost everybody. Uh, we've lost oh, everything. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's see. I think I can come up with an emergency. Okay. Quick. So I'm gonna put this on most exciting. There you go. Yeah. Face bar. Try to add another ice. Uh, that's gonna be a game. Or... Let me know when you have my camera on for sound better. Okay. All right, there, there we go. Okay, I'm clear from you. Yeah, you can you can go away. <laughs> you can go fix that. <laughs> I'll break a bit early there, David. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to deal with a few things I have. At least this is taken care of. Uh, we'll put this, leave this on most exciting. The only problem is it's not showing you who we're watching. I know that's David Clymer because I know his gray and red paint job with the Simpit logos. User disconnected from your channel. Uh, I could put it on me. Just follow me. Yeah, well, it was everything but me. I'm all fine. You can see my feed's fine. My audio is fine. Robbie, you there? Yep. Yeah, Robbie's okay. fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Brian's fine. Whoa! Yeah, but we've lost all of Rick Motech. Now, I did hear... I, I, I think we had, like, seven simulators going today. Um, and I know Frank was a little nervous about power consumption. So, they might have oh shut down the whole building, because I lost all three cameras. So, alright. Um, most exciting is a little unclear, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll actually get out on the Damn it! So, go to a, one of our old style feeds, I suppose. There we go. That's me. Now let's see what kind of damage we can do, because we do have to make up some time. We're not where we need. We're dropped back to 10th place at this point. So we are going to have to do better. Whoop. This is my uh, official knock the rust off. Haven't been in the rig quite some time. And uh, different wheel and pedals than last time I drove, even. Boo hoo. I'm 
I'm sitting here with maybe some of the best gear on earth. Boo hoo, it's not what I ran yesterday. I can't even hear him, Stan. That's the funny thing. Who? You guys are hearing it much louder than I. All right, I gotta step away for a minute. User joined your channel. I popped you the new link there, Sean. All right, I'll try that out in a moment. I'm still loading in. I'll let you know when I'm... Uh, Frank, uh, they lost internet down there. The whole... Oh. Back to me here one. Oh, don't you love technology? <laughs> when it works. And it works, yep. Oh, <laughs> Morano! Oh man, I improved by a bit, and it didn't get me anything on the on the board. That's not cool. Oh, my foot is killing me. I had a feeling that was going to bother you trying to drive. Is it your yeah. right foot? It's my right foot, and it started in the arch yesterday morning, and it grew to my heel, and then it grew to my ankle. Yeah, it's oh. like everything's overly strained, like almost like I strained it, but I don't I didn't do anything. It just oh. I don't even I don't even want to use the words of what the condition is called. Oh um, gosh. All right. <laughs> let's just say it's that condition that gets you, you know, movie tickets and discounts on certain restaurants. You know. Gotcha. Oh that Yeah, one. that's not good. Goodness, Sean. <laughs> wow. Oi, oi. Yeah, but I ran a 22.8 and it got me nowhere on the board. But... Okay, my my picture is up and it is smooth. Okay, so let's try to be back in control. All right, Brian Highcotter, he is out there doing his usual dance, a 121.007. Now, you think that is astonishing. Cameron Martineau is right behind him with a 121.011. Four thousandths of a second off of our leader. Aldous Putelli right behind him with a 121.248. We have another 121 on the board. That's Evan Peichel coming in with a 121.63. Now three drivers in the 21s, and now Cameron Martineau just busted the 20s, a 120.930. Oh, 
Oh, Cameron Martineau doing what he does best, working his way up to the top of that leaderboard, coming off that big championship Monday night, and he's doing it again in that number 98 this evening with a 120.930. That is our new leader on the board. Brian Highcotter now dropping back to P2 with his 121.007. And then Aldous Butelli right behind him with a 121.248. Great to see Eric Fournier out here with us tonight. Thanks for joining us, Eric, for our August edition of the Rickmotech Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. Nathan Nicholson, another driver coming to us from the Extreme Motorsports Series. Great to see Nathan out there tonight. And, of course, John Hill. John, hello, buddy. Great to see you back here this evening. John, uh, friend to visit me in my new location. Is that right? Yeah, he was uh, passing through this way uh, literally the day I was going on my vacation. Oh, uh, gosh. But he and his uh, girlfriend came by, and we all went to breakfast. Had a nice Very time. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. I'm a little off the beaten path, so, you know, my friends from Southern California don't necessarily make it up here very often yeah, right it's a bit of a trek up there isn't it a couple yeah. three hours well and it's really kind of out of the way like yeah you know. sure taking a little bit of curb there sean yeah you need a little there hey, a little bit a little bit yeah that that curve's not good and this curb i just can't not hit but oh oh, oh. oh. That was beautiful, Robbie. Nice job uh, getting on the brakes there, boy. You had a you had a big orange in your face there for a moment. <laughs> well, there's a huge, huge difference on back straightaway speed if we could have got. Huh? No, well, it just in other words, if we would just draft with the wing we have. Yeah, you guys could bust out sometimes. Do you follow what I'm saying? Like, like holy shit, I. I had like six mile an hour more on the back straightaway yeah, following you. Yeah, you me up a ton. David Levesque coming out to join us. He'll be in the number 68 here this evening. And then uh, Corey Allen as well in the number 42. Hopefully he'll be able to get out on track here momentarily. Great to see so many of these drivers. Jake White Rowell, great to see, uh, or is that Roll? I mean, that, may be, that may be Roll. Uh, White Roll, R-O-W-E-L-L, -L -L. number 28 here. This worked his way up the board quite quickly with just nine laps on the board. 28 tonight, a 122.390 puts him P8. Board. You might as well try to pass me, Sean. Okay. Oof, yeah, not quite enough. Yeah, you didn't have enough to get around you. Ah, damn it. Well, our tires are still cold. I can't get in that corner. Oh, like gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Ah! ah! Oh, yep, cold tires. Oh, gosh, that hurts. Did you? Hmm. Probably coming back out. He's going to hook up with Sean here. Watch this. Sean's about to come down into turn one. See him in the bottom frame. Uh, going around? Uh, Did you oh make boy. it? <laughs> oh, I'm going around. Oh, this car is so good. <laughs> uh, you know, but you can't complain because it's like, yeah, it's bouncy. Don't expect it to grip when you're bouncing around right, corners. Right, right, exactly. Like, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure I only had two or one wheel on the ground at times there. Watching uh, Anthony Murano out here, uh, that number 21. He's having a good night. Up to P9, 122.410. Go ahead. Sitting right between Joe and Tony. Oh, we watch him head off that uh, turn of 12 there uh, into the wall. Not want to do that in the real car. That would be quite a quite a knock on the old noggin. Robbie Unser sitting P15 right now with a 123.4. John Hill just ahead of him uh, with a 123.364. My gosh, one thousandth of a second. Jesus, uh, I got no front end at the beginning of our stint. 
Thomas Dudek sitting P13 with a 123 flat. Then we start getting into the 122 times. Uh, Sean Cole sitting P12. Uh, that's going to put him... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take the top twelve for our first round here this evening. Oh, now the Gone. number. Now we have an over under. Yeah, yes, we do. Yes, we. You're taking Gone, how many? Uh, well, we're taking. Uh, sorry, taking sixteen in in the first first. Oh, uh, yeah, sixteen in the first sprint that. race. Yep, yep, sixteen, and then we'll take twelve to the final round. And there will be an inversion in that final round, Sean. Do you want to know how many it is? <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not telling you. You're not telling me. <laughs> Wait, so 16 are in the heat race one. One. That yeah. is correct. Are you ready? And, or did you, and, and did you we know out? how many are going to be in race out? two? 12. Okay, so you, you, that you let the cat out of the bag there. 12. I did let the cat out of the bag there. <laughs> but the but the inversion is another number. The the unknown that I'm not number. telling you yet. Okay. <laughs> well, oh, I sure can. <laughs> that I can do. <laughs> Sim pit one. That'll get you into the session tonight. We are on iRacing in the hosted sessions, of course. And uh, Sim pit one, all lowercase. That will get you into the session. Of course, we are live on the Sim pit this evening. Great to have all of you out there in our viewer world and the fan base of the Sim Pitch Show. Thanks for joining us tonight for the August edition of the Rick Matek Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. As we work towards that big December championship event, and uh, we're actually going to be giving away $500 in uh, Rickmo, Rickmo bucks to one of these drivers. They'll be able to go shop online at the uh, rickmotech.com uh, address and look for anything they want for that $500 gift certificate. Okay. That'll be given to the winner of our December event. However... In order to be eligible for that final championship round of the Hot Lap Hump Day, you have to win one of these events. So right now we have seven winners on the board uh, from uh, January through July. Oh. Tonight uh, we're going to award another winner that will be the winner <laughs> that takes the, uh, takes the win in our second event here tonight. I'm a mess. Well, Sean, we have been aware of that for some time now. <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> but that camera's so off. I do. That's 21 car. Boy, he's laying in some nice laps here. There we go. Now everything. All right. Let's head back to Sean here in the pits. He's ready to head back out on track. Let's see what... Oh, but, uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All uh, right, back to that 12 car. There's the 26, the 21. There's Brian Highcotter coming up out of the S's, heading up out of that famous turn five, the one that everybody wants to take every inch of, all the way to the point of, well, sometimes kissing that barrier on the inside there. Brian coming up on the 66 car here. That 66 machine Boy. is sitting 19th right now, Kenneth Step. Going to let Brian get the run around him. Brian now coming up uh, right yeah. on the heels of that 66. Let's see if he's I'm going to be able to. Lap. Oh, you're on an hot lap. Gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Smart move, smart move. Appreciate the courtesy there. Boy, we are filling up out here. Quite a few drivers. We still have uh, several garages left. About 20 garages left. We have uh, 26 drivers, I believe. At, uh, 27 drivers now. But Entered our uh, August edition of the Hot Lap uh, Challenge. The way this works, drivers have two hours to practice and get themselves warmed up for qualifying. That's going to take place here in about 45 minutes. We will, uh, at the top of the hour, switch over to the Hot Lap Qualifying, where the drivers will actually be able to go out and Hot Lap for 30 minutes. They can use the draft. They can do whatever they need to do to try to get themselves up into the top 16 on the leaderboard. Top 16 will get them into the first 15-minute sprint race tonight. We will have dual sprint races, both 15 minutes in length. Second race will take the top 12 drivers out of that uh, group of 16 in that first heat. Those top 12 will have an inverted grid on the nose of the field there. We'll announce that here shortly. 
Got to keep Sean in suspense because it's the one big thing he wants to know every time is how many are we inverting, Kevin? Well, magic number. That's right. That's right. All right, getting a call from the Rick Motek headquarters. Stand by, folks. Let's see what's going on down there. Driving like caca. Okay, here's our latest update from the Miami headquarters of Rick Motek. Da -da 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 Okay, the internet is out uh, in Miami. They have an internet outage in their area where they're at there in Miami Lakes. Wow. So yeah, so they're they're anxiously awaiting for it to to return. Uh, so we're uh, we've been told to keep an eye and see. If we happen to see any of the Rickmotech uh, one, two, or three machines uh, uh, getting back out on track, so okay, yep, yeah, we did have one of those drivers uh, eligible uh, for for the top sixteen, sitting P twelve. Uh, I told Frank that I'd make sure that I'd let Sean know that that driver was one position ahead of him. So Frank thought that was a good idea to make sure <laughs> Sean was aware. <laughs> oh, I will be most unhappy. Oh, goodness. Well, I tell you what, Evan Peichel has found his way to the top of the board, uh, pushing Cameron P Martineau down to P2 there. Uh, not by much. Not by much. We're talking, uh, oh, 23 hundredths of a second. Can't even click my fingers that quick. Evan Peichel coming in with a 120.83. Cameron Martineau in that number 98 coming in with a 120.8. One and our good friend Brian Highcotter in that five sitting there with a 121.007. Uh, still hasn't been able to break into the that, uh, but oh, how Brian is! He'll his guff up and uh, he'll be bouncing up there to the top of the board. I'm Aldous Putelli uh, still hanging tough there in that number six. 121.248, still in the 21s. David Clymer now is our third driver in the 21s in that number. Very familiar to Climber. A 121.915 has him five. 
Let's go back to some of our other drivers here on the leaderboard to give you some updates. Uh, Anthony Morano Jr. sitting P10 with a 122.410. Robbie Unser, look at him, man. He has moved up the board there. Had dropped all the way back to P15. Now finds himself P11 with a 122.18. Great lap out of him. Oh, sorry, Brian. You're going the Rick Motec okay. 1 machine that we mentioned, uh, P12. I was like, nope, I'm getting in front of that one. Yeah, 122.830. And then our good buddy, Sean Cole, the host of our show tonight, and that number 39, as always, and showing that beautiful orange and blue colors out there on track. Let's see if we can find Sean as a man or... There he is. I thought he was close to... Uh... Brian there. There we go. Watching Sean now coming up through the S's, heading through turn five. Bouncing up off that curb there quite vigorously. Kevin Peichel back there in the background. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean trying to improve on his time. Sean uh, really uh, having a great run tonight. Pete X, I mean, my gosh, he's just well up the board here to a 129 or 121.991 my goodness puts himself right behind david climber and and no surprise there as those two seem to go at it every single month here on the hot lap races my goodness these guys uh do, do you guys practice together all the time is that is that what happens here no, you guys but I, it is amazing how often he and i are in the same Oh, ballpark. I, right. I mean, you're always within a tenth or two of each other. It's hilarious. Uh, good stuff. Kenneth Eastep now still holding down P19. Uh, Nathan Nicholson has moved his way up to P20 with a 125.313. Shurful Lu Luisi, I'm going to say. Uh, Shurful Luisi in that number 23 coming in with a 123.666. Finding himself P-17 tonight. Jose Cabrera has dropped all the way back to uh, P-16. Uh, Jose, uh, one of the P-3 AM drivers over in the uh, Motorsports Rickmotech World Challenge. That kicks off this coming Monday. So if anyone out there wants to uh, uh, find themselves in a, uh, a seven-race championship for the fall series here of the World Challenge, uh, sponsored by Rick Motek and, of course, broadcasted by Apex Racing TV, live race marshals in that series. It's uh, it's quite a quite an intense series to run. They do offer a GT3 AM class as well in the uh, GT3 class. And then... They also have the TCR class running with the GT cars this season. World Challenge, a different mix. Typically, they have GT3 and P2 out there doing something a little different this fall season, bringing the TCR cars over from the Rick Motech Sports Car Series and introducing them into the World Challenge, running those uh, alongside the GT cars. So that should be a pretty exciting uh, season coming up here uh, this fall. Sounds fun. And if you want to register, just head over to xmsracing.com. Again, xmsracing.com. That's a Michael Sierra. You'll see two buttons that will come up. that will say, I like to turn left or I like to turn right. So if you're a road racer, hit that right button. That'll get you over to the World Challenge. Uh, it's not just your uh, no, no, it's because we offer oval championships as well at extremes. So. <laughs> so if you like to turn left, you click on that side, and that takes you into all the oval championships at uh, XMS Racing. And click I like to turn right. Well, that'll take you into the sports car series, the classic sprint series where the Mazda Miata is featured, or that beautiful world challenge featured car this fall. Sean, you guys always have stuff going on at the Sim Pit, man. What's we're what's? Kinda, the, we're in our uh, summer break. Every summer hiatus off. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we ran some uh, some series over the summer for fun. You know, just some short seasons and some combinations that we don't normally run. But no, we're we're September, so next okay. month we we kick everything off. I know we're doing a a GTE series that oh, on Sundays that I'm I'm. Super looking forward to. Um, oh, that's, yeah. 
pretty much the series I'm putting all my eggs into that basket. I mean, Ooh, I, I, you know, over the years, it's kind of hard, you know, for my seat to balance how much do I race um, yep. and how much do I, you know, review and, and do my normal, you know, daily routine. Sure, and sure. It's, and it's always, you know, I find sometimes I get really caught up in racing and then the show suffers. Oh, and right. then I usually overcompensate. So then the next season I like don't race at all. And I'm just trying to like catch up on content. And then I feel like I'm depriving myself of my hobby. Oh, of and, course. You know, of so, course. Yeah. So I, I think what I'm kind of doing coming off of this year and this summer is I'm just going to take on one series next season and make sure I keep production where I need it to be and make sure that I do well in that series, not just show up, but do well, um, which yep. means putting putting in the laps, putting in the time. So uh, it's important to me to to start off small and and get it in a real controlled routine where I'm like, okay, I got this, I can do this, and I can get everything done. And then, you know, if all goes well, the following season, maybe we'll add another series, maybe we'll add Noble to it. Exactly. Um, so that's kind of the approach I'm taking. I mean, late New Year's resolution. Coming off my vacation, so I kind of came to a realization of how I have to work things this this coming season. Nice, nice. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna step away. I know we're down to like just me and Robbie on the camera here. Yep, and 30 but, minutes remaining. Uh, right, right now, we're on uh, Joe Joe Antonio in that number 31, driving that Max Pappas Innovations uh, machine out there on track. I made the jump I needed to make. Now I need to make another. Ooh. We still got a full second to knock off, but pretty sloppy oh, yeah. out there i can see you have 30 second. minutes to do it sean 30 minutes all right yep. well it's gonna start with uh i guess walking my dog and maybe that'll make my foot feel better oh there you go there you I, go. stretch it out a bit yeah, yeah. It may not be a bad idea yeah hopefully so and hopefully we'll get rick motek back in it's kind of i know yeah like, i was kind of looking to see if those yeah. cars were back out on track not quite yet so it's like quiet on the track yeah, well, I, you know, time. well, Frank did mention that they uh, what they're doing down there is they're just doing some offline driving. Right. Uh, they they set up all the sims, <laughs> and you know, they've got a house full of people at the <laughs> open opening there, so uh, oh, they want to so keep hard. all the simulators going. So they're doing doing some offline stuff and feeding them food and drinks. <laughs> the, yeah, well, that's good for all them, and and for anybody watching, anybody taking part. I mean, now is the time. To get those laps in, you're not going to find the track much cleaner. <laughs> yes, clearer. that is very true. Very <laughs> true. Yeah, you bet. You bet. And a little bit of cloud cover is uh, helping out as well yeah. with those lap times. So. Ooh, Jake White Raul just jumped up on the board, it looks like. Boy, he sure did. Yeah, he yeah. jumped up to a 121.927. Woo! All right. Him, uh, right P6. Back. All right. Uh, sounds good. Climber. Climber. I got to get Climber. He's two tenths ahead of me. Oh! Oh, man, he is. I'm yes, holding he off is. the rest of our guys, though. Generelli, Antonio, Murano. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Sounds good, buddy. All right, Matt. Well, I tell you what, the times are a moving on the board here. Evan Peichel still holding down that 120.838 up on the board. And right behind him, Cameron Martineau in that number 98 with a 120.861. But the movers, here we go. David Clymer has moved up. Well, now he just dropped to P6 as Jake White Rawl has moved his way all the way up to P5 with a 121.480. That now puts five drivers in the 120. Sean Cole sitting back there in P7 now with a 121.991. And then Chris Generelli right behind him with a 122.003. And, of course, the big rivalry between David Clymer and Sean Cole. It rages on again this month in August. <laughs> it never ends. Those two are neck and neck. David Clymer just ahead of Sean with that 121.707. We've watched Anthony Morano move, move up the board as well. He finds himself P10 right now. Great to see Joa Antonio back out there with us in that familiar number 31 coming in with a 122.024. All right, drivers, we have just under 30 minutes remaining. Just under 30 minutes remaining at the top of the hour. We will switch you over to qualifying it will be open qualifying you will have 30 minutes to get yourself into the top 16 on the leaderboard we're taking the top 16 drivers to the first heat race this evening 
There'll be dual 15-minute heat races tonight. Again, top 16 will enter the first race. We will take the top 12 drivers out of the first race into the second heat race this evening. That will be our final feature, actually, not a heat race. It'll be our feature event, uh, race two. It'll be a 15-minute race, and we will invert the top seven. We will invert the top seven for that grid this evening. So it's looking forward to an exciting dual set of sprint races tonight. We are giving away another one of those Rick Motek Racing Simulators t-shirts. You can see those out on the website at rickmotek.com. Speaking of, we do want to send a big thank you out to Frank Rico for putting these events on each and every month. And I believe we're going to have to check the dates, but I think we are coming up on five years. That and actually putting on the Rick Motek Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. I think it'll be in October that we hit our five-year mark. So we appreciate each and every one of you coming out. A lot of the names I mentioned on the leaderboard have been with us for, gosh, several years now. You've been coming out for this Hot Lap Hump Day event. The third Wednesday of every month, for those of you that are here for the first time, the third Wednesday of every month we put this event on. It's a surprise track and car combination every time. Nobody, and I mean nobody, not even Sean Cole, any of these guys know what they're going to be facing when they come in here to compete for that Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge event. All right, guys, we'll see everyone at the top of the hour here. We'll kind of keep the radio clear so that you guys can concentrate on getting ready for that qualifying coming up here at the top of the hour. So a half hour left. Uh, yeah, down to about 26 minutes now. Then we'll switch right over back. to qualifying. Yep. Sean, have you returned yet? Oh, that'd be a big negative. Brian, how you doing? We haven't heard much <laughs> out of you this evening. <laughs> And Brian is not at the mic either. Let's see. Let me take a stab at Robbie. I heard him laugh, so he's close. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, let's get some get camera on kicked. you, buddy, and see how you're doing. There you are. Um, yeah, heading up the back stretch. Yeah. All right. Oh, you're sitting pretty good, Robbie. You've got the holding down P12 now with that 22.818. So that's uh, that's certainly going to get you into uh, to our event tonight. But uh, you're going to have to repeat that in qualifying, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know that I can. Well, John can hook up a little bit. You guys might be able to wager your ways <laughs> yeah. into, the, into the event. Oh, goodness. Going to be a tight one tonight. Yeah, we've had uh, nearly 30 drivers show up for our hump day challenge here this evening. So big showing. Big outage tonight. Popular uh, popular car. Everybody yeah. loves these Porsche Cup cars, man. They're, they're loose. They're crazy to drive. But, man, they are so much fun once you get a handle of them. Golly, they're a blast. Sure. <laughs> sure they are. Sure they are, Kev. You know, this corner right here is one that most find very daunting and frustrating oh, to get a good a one. You know, that is one of my favorite corners on this track. I, I have just, never figured out how to get through the son of a bitch to get down the straightaway. Ever. Oh, it, it is so tricky. Like, I've never felt like, oh, I got through there right. That's right. What I yeah, because you, know you, you know when yeah, you yeah. come no, off no, a corner no, well. You can feel it. Yep. Let's, uh, cameras kind of rambled through here a little bit. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I got the 42 on screen now. We'll see how Corey Allen's doing. Corey having uh, a good run here this evening. Over the 16th, right in front of him, or 10 rather. <laughs> and car, Chris Generelli having a good run this evening, sitting well. Uh, P8, so he'll certainly, if he can repeat that time in qualifying, he'll find himself about midway up on the grid. 
Of course, P7 would be a good spot as we are inverting the top seven tonight. And Sean's not even here to hear me say that. God, I wonder how I... much fuel we're going to have. I know. Yeah, we haven't been able to capture a, uh, a fuel rating. Are eight that... gallons going to work or no? I need mm. like 12 gallons. Boy, I tell you, the competition's pretty tough. We haven't gotten anybody to give us any kind of uh, fuel ratings on what we need here. The Get a fuel use from, from one of the drivers. I'm, I'm going to guess, Robbie, honestly, you, you're, you're probably burning a, a good eight to nine tenths a gallon. How I, many I, laps do you think we're going to yeah so, so Yeah, so laps, you're going to be looking at... Um, calculate that. Little handy dandy math. Going to be about uh, 11 laps, possibly 12, possibly 12, but probably about 11 laps. So I would, I would go. I, 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 I would be saying, what are you running right now to get these? Times? Uh, I got 11.7. Well, I haven't gone it. I was on eight. Hell. Okay. I I, that, run. that that might be a little light. Yeah. Uh, I, I I would say if you go in the 10, 11 gallon range, you'd probably be safe there. Okay. I can't 11, imagine seven. these burning more than a gallon a lap. And the GT3 cars seem to burn about that. So I, it's probably close. I think I'm getting a uh, 0.6 per lap. Is, is that what you're getting? Okay, I, that's, gallon, yeah. that's why I was thinking 0.8. It was probably plenty. You know, wouldn't be any more than that. So 0.6. Okay, I'll just calculate it at 0.7. Yeah, that's safer. Yeah, if you run a, uh, somewhere in that eight-gallon range, you should be fine. 8.2, 8.3, somewhere around there, that should get you. Uh, okay. Coming up on about 17 minutes remaining here in our Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge, our eighth edition for 2022. Every driver that wins one of these throughout the year will find themselves eligible for the championship in December. We'll take those top 12 drivers. They will compete one last time for Rick Matejic. Racing Simulators t-shirt. They will also race for $500 in sim racing equipment coming up this December. That'll be the third Wednesday of December this year. Hold these events the third Wednesday of every month. <laughs> Mentioned earlier, I think we're coming up on our five-year mark since we've been... Hard to believe it's been that long. Well, we've got one, two, three, four Porsches coming up out of five. All pretty much identical paint schemes. Watching Robbie Unser now as he heads down into sixth. 
Now approaching that daunting corner of turn seven. And that is a tricky turn to get off. Update, of. Darren. I back, Kevin. Hey, Sean, how you doing, buddy? Got some information for you. You want to get me old? Just go ahead. Yeah. I'll break early. You're going to want to run uh, just inside eight gallons, 8.2, 8.3, somewhere around there. Oh, good. No, Race. Thank you. Ed, uh, Brian uh, kindly got us a cool oh, so usage I'm... mark. Yep, yep. So we were able to do I'm a little calculating. A little, little light then, huh? Oh, cheating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't be doing that now. <laughs> Woo, Robbie getting quite a run with that 16 car ahead of him. Yeah, my uh, lap was a no draft. Taking my that into account at all. Good lap. Aldis Putelli, quite a quite a fast driver. Aldis sitting up in P4 right now. Let's see if Robbie's able to hang with him. He can. It's going to give him an opportunity to really utilize some of that slipstream on the back stretch. Oh, 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 he got out from underneath of him. We see Robbie uh -huh. fading away in the background, leaving us with a little bit of dust back there. Now we pick up uh, the 39 coal, the, Sean, the 39 coal, the 39 <laughs> car of Sim Coal, of Sean Pitt. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, all uh, work. they all work. Yep, yep. <sighs> On my outlap, Tony. I'm just gonna swing on by the 21 car. He's gonna let Sean come around. Drivers left there. I'm on Watch my him. outlap, though. Yep. Sean not on a timed lap at the moment here, but he will be coming to a timed lap as he heads through 10A and B here, taking a lot of that inside corner there at 10A. I racing has relaxed some of these off track limits here around some of the courses last year or so. Boy, the 21 just doing a beautiful pirouette coming down into turn 12 there. Not something you want to do in racing. The 16 seeing another driver fall off uh, to his wayside there coming through the S's of three and four. Now heading down through the S's of five. Back to another sim pit machine of that number 242, Mr. David Clymer. John Cole's nemesis out here in that red and gray machine. <laughs> Thank you, Chronic. I appreciate that. I don't know if you're still in the chat. I just saw that message, but I appreciate it. <sighs> Going to pick up that Max Pappas Innovations machine coming up out of the pits here. Rick Motek is actually a dealer of the Max Pappas products, carrying all of uh, his sim racing steering wheel line. Don, you got to uh, travel to uh, PRI with uh, Frank uh, one of those years. Uh, I was up there with him last year. Yeah, we got to yeah. our Max. Yeah, yeah. I have a buddy who for him back when he raced IndyCar for Ray Hall. Is that right? Yeah, so I actually met him back in like back 2000. In the, the, back in the heyday, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I doubt Max remembered either one. No, actually, that's not true. He actually is really good at remembering people. Yeah, um, yes. But uh, no, I, I met him a, a couple decades ago, and then, yeah, we at PRI, we got to hang out quite a bit, though. Oh, sure. Yep, yep. A lot, a lot of chatting there. Yeah, we had a good... Good time with Max last year up there at PRI and got to help him set up his booth. We, uh, Rick Wotek shares a booth with him there at, uh, whoa, at the PRI whoa. event. Whoa. Awesome thing. I've done that in the race. Yeah, I, oh, my foot's really hurting when I, I have a, you know, I'm on the 12 these, minutes. You know, I picked the wrong day to stop Smith sniffing glue, basically. But no, I hey, that that shoe could have gone, or that glue could have gone into fixing your shoes there for uh, more foot support. <laughs> no, I have my Rick Tech Gen Two Steel Gear pedals. Uh huh. Which I have them so. I mean, I have them so there's very little movement on the brake pedal. The gas Whoa. pedal is super heavily sprung, and. So yeah, I have my like Formula One style setup going here, 
Oh boy. On a day that my feet are like, can't we just drive the Camry today? Yeah, right. Or the Miata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, can we just? Although I tell it? you that that MX-5 is almost as much work to drive as these cars. <laughs> the way you can throw that thing around, my gosh, watching yeah, those guys over in our. But you probably. Can't oh, that's them. true. Yeah. Wouldn't want to use the brake you have right now in that car. <laughs> really brutal right now luckily it's my left foot doing braking but yeah my gas yeah, pedal good. is uh really heavily sprung too ah it's really weird it's a bad place to have a strain in the middle of your arch yeah uh, i mean it doesn't prevent hot lapping right it just prevents right. multi lapping we have, a new, leader. New we have leader. a new leader on the board new leader on the board that 98 car as we see him overtake going down into 10 AB there. Mark Cameron Martineau coming in with a 120.525. What a time out of that 98 machine here this evening. My gosh, picking up three tenths now on that second place driver of Evan Peichel. That number 15, uh, sitting on a 120.838. Brian Highcotter still holding strong in that 05 with his 120.885. I got a feeling some of these guys are saving it for qualifying as we are now 10 minutes away. Drivers, 10 minutes remaining in the hot lap wall pre-warm-up. We will switch over to qualifying in 10 minutes. Ten minutes remaining out there. If any of you folks want to come out and uh, test your racecraft and skills out here at Road Atlanta and the beautiful Porsche Cup 911. Road Atlanta, 2.5 more, 2.54 miles around this uh, beautiful circuit. 12 corners and the thrill of a lifetime. That's what I see here. My gosh, these guys are laying down some amazing times. All the regulars back this month here for the August edition. Summer is kind of getting to an end. We're going to start seeing sim racing pick up. Oh, yeah. You bet. You bet. Drivers will be getting back in the race seats for the fall championships coming up. A lot of leagues. See them getting cranking up on Facebook everywhere, you know, recruiting drivers, getting ready for the fall seasons. And Yep. Oh, we're going around. Yep, yep, yep. I tried to use it the gas. Damn it. Get back to school and get back to the driving seat. At least this car can do a proper 180. Right? That's like, uh, that's what's so frustrating with modern GT3s. Like, if you do loop it, and then right. it's like you can't get the thing to turn around unless you, like, have a button map to remove traction control. Right, right. This thing, you just dump the clutch, you go right around again. Boy, Joe Antonio just really, really trying to stay with that car right in front of him there. He knows that that's going to be a big benefit to him. And hang with that 14 car all the way around to the back stretch as the 14 goes wide out of five. Brings it back on track. 42 has spun. And now the 14's letting the 31 by. Joe was really hoping he was going to be able to receive some slipstream. But a gift there from the 14, but not so much. Ryan Highcotter now may take advantage of that slipstream as he pulls out onto the back stretch. Good run up out of seven there as he heads up into eight underneath the walkway. On ah, the 14, dives driver's right. He's going to let uh, Brian head on by. Brian says, dang it, why didn't you give me that slipstream there, buddy? I could have used that. Brian sitting P3, trying to find every little tenth he can as he barrels down into 10A. Man, cuts that corner beautifully on entry. Come up out of 10B. Up through 11, underneath the bridge, over the hill. Now down, racing into turn 12 as we get that ground speed shot as they fly by us. Oh, I'm so sloppy right now. Uh, Brian's just not quite able to beat that time there. Still sitting on 120.863. Not that that's a horrible time here at Road Atlanta in these cup cars, especially in the weather conditions. Back to that beautiful bull. Let me get my sunglasses on that bright orange and blue sim pit car. Nationwide machine following right behind him there. That's Number 42 Corey. car. Oh. Yep, Corey Damn. Allen. Oh, I'm Sean. Mess, Whoa. 
A lot of curbs there, Bubba. A lot of curbs. I can't believe we're still facing the right direction. <laughs> oh, here we go. Brian coming back out onto the backstretch. Brian Highcotter taking time away from his real-world driving and coming over to the sim to join us for Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. Great to have Brian out here with us as he's picking up some slipstream here. He is going to get a run. Let's see if the 31 is uh. going to let him by. And, of course, Mr. Courtesy, Joe Antonio, showing his uh, professionalism there, allowing the 05 to... Uh, oh, the and what button. does Brian do? <laughs> I got him distracted, Sean. I did what I do to you, to Brian. <laughs> I, I meant to hit the flashers to say thank you, uh, and right? <laughs> I hit the piss speed limiter. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm becoming a pro at this. Good golly. <laughs> Uh, What's our time? We're at seven minutes till qualifying. Seven minutes remaining. Seven minutes from. It is, seven well, minutes. actually less than that. Six minutes. It six means minutes. Seven minutes. Six minutes to join on the old UI. That's right. <laughs> um, as soon as it switches to qualifying, you can still join, but you'll have to use the new UI once it switches to qualifying. So heads up out there. Buyer beware. If you want to join us, now is the time. Hop on in. Look for the room. Hosted by Frank Rico. Obviously, we're in the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car at Road Atlanta, and the password of the room is Simpit1. All right, got to rest my foot. I need a spot where I can elevate my foot and put it in a bucket of ice at the same time. Well, I'd say let's take a look at the bubble times here around P16, but you oh, know yeah. what, folks? We have uh, qualifying coming up yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, right now, we are... Just just yep we're just turning laps right now these guys are getting their cars dialed in working on those setups this is an open setup challenge that we do third wednesday of every month all these drivers come out here and they just battle hard it's an opportunity for them to just really do some hot lap racing and and hot lapping to qualify for a couple of fun little dual 15 minute sprint races at the end of the night we have that coming up here in about five minutes that's why i haven't even tried yet you know i I didn't want people to really see what I got, you know. I hey, well, we, we understand. We know how you are. <laughs> five Can minutes I... remaining, drivers. Five minutes remaining. Uh, okay, I have him, Joe. I have him muted, but I'll let him know. Kevin, uh, apparently, when you talk in I racing, you're very quiet or can't hear you. Oh, that's in I racing. I have you muted. How, how do you me. adjust that? Uh, in the sound options, I think there the there button. is a mic adjustment in there for. Sure, I'll look too. Yeah, let's go see uh, to turn up your mic. I know that there is a volume uh, I don't adjustment. See uh, hmm. Uh, return audio adjustments. Hmm. Yeah, not seeing. That's odd. I wonder why that would be so quiet in the... I'll just make sure I... Gosh, I thought I was yelling at him in there. Okay. Oh, Chris and Joey. Joe got the better of me, dang it. He, you oh, yeah, you know that's sounds, right. So, yep. so, like, your microphone's not even happening. That's what they're saying? They can't even hear me in there? Yeah. Wow. See... Cameron Martin. Check, check, check one. Oh, yeah, it's not working. All right, stand by. Cameron Martin with a 120.525. That is insanely quick. Oh, yeah. Evan yeah, yeah. Pickle. Two with 120.8. Insanely quick. Also with a 128.8. Mr. High Cotter in the Nismo Porsche. Jake White Raul. Raul. 21 flat. 29 goes off track there. Oldest. Pukelis. 21, 1, 5. Very fast times. I think Kevin was saying something about be surprised to see somebody break out of the 22s. And at this point, <laughs> eight people have. At this point, even I have. It's it, <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, I love it. That's great, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd be great if we saw Rick two minutes, two minutes pop remaining into, into action. Able to hear me That's in the stem that time, Sean? I I have you muted because I get double talk then. 
Well, I'm just going to mute you right back. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch real quick. Be right back. Oh, they did. Hear you. Yes, they heard you. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Joa. Thank you very much. Everybody, thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, my foot. I wonder if I can go barefoot. One shoe. All right, we are getting close. Ball flying time. Really All right, drivers, we're down to about 90 seconds remaining remaining in our pre qual warm up here. Two hours of uh, hot lapping has come to an end. We will be switching over to qualifying. And you guys are going to have to find a way to repeat those times one more time in order to get into the top 16 to make it into our first sprint race here this evening. We want to remind drivers once we get into qualifying here in just under a minute, we want to make sure that we keep our courtesy and our respect up out there on track. We're all out here to have a good time and have some fun this evening and try to win one of those Rickman Tech Racing Simulator t-shirts. And of course, we do have something else on the line. How about $500 in sim racing equipment? That's right. Each driver that has won one of these events all the way through January and July to July this year, those winners are eligible to go after that $500. $500 championship that will take place the third Wednesday in December of this year. But again, if you win this event tonight, you plug yourself in to ticket, a ticket to race in that final event in December to race for $500 in sim racing equipment. All right, drivers will be switching over to qualifying here. Stand by in about 10 seconds. All right, drivers, green flag qualifying, green flag qualifying. And let's keep our courtesy up out on track, and let's utilize that F3 box, drivers. Utilize that F3 box. If you happen to spin off track, please be careful on your re-entry. Make sure you are not re-entering in front of another approaching vehicle. So let's utilize the F3 box here in qualifying. 30 minutes. Good luck, drivers. All right, here we go, folks. Uh, for our viewers out there, SimPit1 is the password. If you want to test your skills and come out here and go up against some of the best of the best uh -huh. on iRacing here this evening, we have drivers like Cameron Martineau, Brian Highcotter, Robbie Unser is here with us tonight, Joa Antonio, of course, Sean Cole from the SimPit has been broadcasting our whole event here this evening, and we appreciate you watching. So if you want to come out and join us on track, SimPit1, we're on iRacing this evening in the hosted sessions. Would be great to have you out. Out there you will have to join via the new ui though the old browser uh by racing will not let you in once qualifying is started so we are underway we are green flag qualifying at this time again if you want to join us you'll have to use the new ui got crackly mikey stand by Okay, is that better? Oh, yeah. On times to come in on the board here. This is their timed lap, the first timed lap for the drivers. 
This is where it's critical, and this is where you have to get a clean lap in. Some of those drivers in practice might have been dipping a tire here or there and getting away with it, putting a time up on the board. Now that will not count. These drivers have to keep those tires on the track surface. They cannot cut any of the corners too excessively, or they will get what's called an off track. And that off track is a little 1X that pops up on the screen, and it negates their lap time. They'll have to come all the way back around and cross that start-finish line again to start a new timed lap. Watch the 21 coming up out of 10B. Back to the MPI machine. 31 of Joe Antonio. Joe comes flying across the line here. Let's brings the time in, and he does. A 121.872 sits him P on the board. Aldis Putelli in the number 16 is now P1 with a 21.735. Anthony Morano Jr. comes across P3 with a 122.402. John Hill, P4 with a 23 flat. So we have one driver in the 22s, two in the 21s, now three in the 21s as Cameron Martineau goes to the top of the board in his number 98 with a 121.113 nearly hitting the 20s right out of the gate in his first lap. Ryan High Cotter now, 124.434, obviously struggled on that first lap. Probably had a little bit of traffic to deal with. Careful Luisi coming in in that number 23 with a 123.288. Getting P7 right now. Evan Piker waiting on his first time. Ryan Highcotter. Or, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, Jake White. Jake White still waiting on him to land a time. The climber still waiting to get his first time on the board. On Cole comes in P4 with a 122.345, a big time out of that 39 sim pit machine. Aldi Putelli, 120.975, our first driver in the 20s. John Hill, P6, a 123.040. Waiting on Evan Peichel. He has not laid a time down, or at least a clean lap. They see these drivers turn three, four, maybe five laps before they actually get a clean lap on the board. That's how far they are pushing the limit on these cars here this evening. They all want to get in to the top 16. I think it takes about two laps to really get these tires worked up. Okay. All right. Yeah, my car sucks. Uh, next lap should be a good one. On new times to come in, the board is pretty much frozen as I'm staring at it. Switching over to Sean Cole on screen here live now. That beautiful orange and blue. Oh, so familiar for 39 cent pit machine. That sun just glaring off that beautiful orange. Coming down through the S's here. Now back to that 98, Cameron Martineau. One of the stars of the evening here in the uh, Road Atlanta Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. Two and a half miles around this course, 12 corners. And I'll tell you, it will wear you out. These guys are going to be struggling here at this last hour of the event with just the endurance. Lap after lap after lap. Looking at the laps on the board, I think these drivers are going to hit well in excess of 100 laps here this evening. Love that speed shot coming out of turn 12 there. David Clymer now back to Brian Highcotter as he's climbing, climbing up on Clymer there. Hopefully he'll uh, pick up some slipstream. Oh, he's in a good position to get it done, too. Let's see if David's out. Oh, David just vanishes, overshoots the S's there out of four and goes right off into the uh, runoff area there. 31 car. Joe Antonio. Joe a regular here with our Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. That was Anthony Morano Jr. Both of these drivers coming through 10A and B there, up through turn 11, up over the hill. Now back to the pair of Porsches. 98 of Cameron Martineau. Frank Rico up, come, back. Coming up on the heels of the 29. Did we get the get them back? I see them coming back to life. 
Okay, fantastic. Y'all make a phone call. Frank wanted me to let them know that they were uh, they were back up, so I will do just that. I can get Frank in here to talk a little bit about uh, some equipment. Not a bad opener. Not bad, not great. 21-6. I think that's better than we ran in practice. The Joa is already P5. Almost like the track got faster. Yeah, I see Rick Motek 1 is on. Still no Rifmo Tech 2 or 3 though. That's great to see them back in action. Alright, we are gonna. High All right. Let's see, is Highcott now that's. Yeah, Brian Highcotter is now at the top of the board. Oh, big collision between the 242 and the 5 car there coming through the S's. Oh, unfortunate for those two drivers. They will have to start back at the pits as we see the 6 car now getting rolling again. The driver will have to come all the way back around. There's Brian coming up out of the pits there. Letting the 30 car come right by there. 30 car on, on a hot lap. Oh, the 14 car finds trouble there coming through the S's. Unfortunately, interferes with uh, Evan Peichel there. He'll have to come back around and start a new lap there. That's unfortunate for Evan. Evan still trying to get a lap a time mic. in here tonight. My goodness. All right, here we go. Brian on his out lap. We'll see if he can uh, get a good start to this next lap as he's trailing behind the 30 car of Blake, Blake Northcutt. Great to see Blake out there with us tonight. It's been a while since we've seen Blake. He was uh, in a couple of hot laps uh, earlier this year. Going to have several drivers. Jake White Roll, who was right oh. up in the top six, I believe, uh, during practice. Uh, he Still trying to find his first best time, or, or a lap time, a clean lap, if you will. Uh, Chris Giannarelli has not gotten a time down. Kenneth Jensen has not landed his first time. Uh, we see that the Rick Motek machines are coming back to life in Miami. They've uh, uh, returned from the uh, internet outage that happened there in Miami Lakes. They are uh, getting back up and running, getting those sims going and getting those drivers strapped back into the seatbelts and back into uh, the motion simulator so they can get back out on track. 19 minutes remaining. 19 minutes remaining here in our qualifying session. High Cotter sitting P1, P2, Cameron Martineau with a 120.769. Aldi Putelli sitting in in that number 16 with a 120.975. So we have a five, a seven, and a nine. Two tenths apart between our top three drivers. Then we head back to a 121.335, which is going to be four tenths back for Anthony Morano Jr. in that number 21. Anthony having a great showing tonight here at Road Atlanta. Joa Antonio in that number 31, uh, sitting there just two thousandths of a second with a .337 over the .335 of Anthony Morano. And then David Clymer, he's only three tenths back from there. And Sean Cole, well, my goodness, he's only four hundredths of a second off of David Clymer. Them pit guys are running pretty tight. Woo! This is going to be quite a battle tonight. This race is going to be so exciting here in the season. Oh, Climber taking quite a bit of curb out of uh, 10B there. Really getting that chassis upset, bouncing that thing up off that corner. 16 trying to find his way through the uh, 
uh, S's and into turn five there. That's unfortunate. He had to lift out of the throttle to, to make that move back to the inside. Oh, he's a little frustrated with that driver. You see him uh, uh, cutting over in front of him there. Drivers, oh, let's be respectful. Oh. Let's be respectful here during qualifying. Kevin Pike won that number 15. I think he's finally found himself a lap time, and he did all the way up to P4 in that number 15. A 121.133 puts him as the leader of the drivers in the 21s in P4. We still have the three leaders up there in uh, the 20s. Uh, Brian Highcotter still sitting on that 20.582. He has not budged from there. Neither has Cameron Martineau. He's sitting on the 20.769. Then we have the 120.975 out of Aldi Putelli. Whoa, taking a lot of dirt as Evan Pike went ahead on collision there. I didn't see who that driver was coming off of turn 12, but a really hard hit to that inside barrier. Oh, 29 car blocking up the brakes there, heading into seven. That turn is so daunting. I'm uphill into that corner. You don't really have a good visual on the apex. You don't see it until you're actually in the corner. Then you have to react. So you really have to set up your muscle memory so that you come into the corner, you react before you mentally are ready for it. It's, it's really the best way to get through that corner there. It's a, really a blind entry. It's, it's, it's an off camber coming over the crest of the uphill there into that corner. You, you don't realize how light that rear end gets as you come over that, that little bit of a crest. Got two drivers here. Yes. Hey, Frank, how are you, buddy? Good. How you guys Boy, doing? Yeah, we're doing wonderful. It's great to, uh, to, I started to say, see your smiling face, but I can't really do that here. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, talk to us a little bit. We noticed we had a uh, uh, an M MPI machine out here on track tonight. So uh, I was sharing with the folks that you guys are actually a dealer for Max and uh, uh, carry quite a, quite a large line of his sim racing wheels. Tell us a little bit about them. Uh, well, <laughs> like you said, yeah, we, we carry a, quite a few of their wheels. Uh, he's got um, he's got a line of sim wheels that he uh, he launched about a year ago. So they're steering rims designed specifically for sim racing. So they don't they're not built with the same uh, safety um, features that sure. the regular wheels have. Uh, but the, and they're built with a lighter foam inside. So they're just made overall a little bit lighter but they're made with the same molds and tooling that they use for the actual wheel so they're they're basically an exact replica uh, of the actual wheels and then they put a unique bolt pattern on them that makes them a little bit more universal to fit uh on, on different bolt patterns yeah throughout we, different varieties in the sim industry sure. yeah exactly but uh yeah overall Really nice wheels, and then we take some of their actual wheels that we have custom made for us um, with unique grips. So he's got uh, a grip material that he developed. I'll let you know uh, inside there. I'm breaking the camera. They call it RG, uh, but essentially it's a um, it's a silicone embedded fabric that they use to wrap the wheels, and uh, a lot of the pro drivers are starting to use them. And essentially, if it's it makes the grip very, uh, it, it's a little sticky. I hate to use the word sticky because it sounds like uh, right. like it's dirty or something. Like there's but, something wrong with it, but that's not the case, right? <laughs> that, right, right. Uh, so you can use them barehanded, and uh, they just give you better grip on your on your hand. But if you're nice. using gloves that have that silicone grip material on the palm, it interfaces really well with that. And... Uh, the benefits are you don't have to put death grip on the wheel. So you can feel what the wheel is doing within your hand, and you're really just turning your hand to, to turn the wheel, but you don't have to grip. Uh, and so you get a lot better feedback from the wheel, and you impart better control over the wheel uh, because your muscles aren't tensed up uh, while doing it. Sure, uh, sure. So we have a few of their wheels that we do. We have a, uh, uh, a cut top formula style wheel 
that we have him do unique with that. He does not do that for the real world, but he does that uh, uh, for us specifically. Uh, Wonderful. We small D-shaped wheel, something like what you would find in a radical, uh, and we we have that done with the uh, that same material. Um, and then we have a few of their NASCAR wheels uh, as well, so the you know, the actual oval car wheels uh, that we will prepare for a sim, and we do some modifications on them to to better fit a sim. Nice. So, yeah, we we have about a dozen different wheels that uh, that we partnered up with them, and uh, and we do those, and they're all on the website. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, uh... You know, the the design elements that go into these wheel rims and you know for some of the folks that may be watching they think well you know a, a, a sim racing a virtual steering wheel do you really need you know grip and and, and, and your hands actually slide well they, they actually do i mean driving in the sim is uh just just as physically demanding and and is exhausting and if not more <laughs> well <laughs> then in the real car it seems <laughs> kevin you're you're using one aren't you I am. Yes, okay. I am. Yep, yep. So I can certainly tell you it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it will wear you out. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. Yep, yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, great, great design. And, of course, well, I mean, you carry such a plethora line of equipment there, uh, everything from small rigs to large rigs to motion platforms, uh, steering wheels, uh, a lot of different makes and models and pieces and parts. And so tell us. Tell us what's what's the latest thing. What's the buzz? The Rickmotech buzz. <laughs> the Rickmotech buzz. So um, we are um, we're now carrying the the Imsim Talento pedal. Um, oh, okay. I've heard some good things. Yeah, they're they're really nice. Um, so they're they're all stainless steel pedals, but what's really unique about them is. They took the design standpoint of, ah. of a sim racer, and so rather than build pedals that uh, that mimic real-world pedals, they looked at what a professional sim racer would want out of pedals, uh, oh. and they designed it that way. So they're designed to be used with socks rather okay. than shoes because sure. you know as we know sometimes we frown upon that but yep yep uh, but you, you do get better feel uh by not wearing shoes um so they designed it that way so the pedal faces are smooth they have a tumbled finish so there's no sharp edges on it or anything so it doesn't snag uh on your socks or anything like that there are wider pedal faces so that you can push down and you don't have any uh pressure points uh, or on, on, foot. Right, right, right. There's no holes on the pedal faces, so you don't have that uh, that waffle effect. Right. Uh, you know, telegraphing through. Um, and then I want to say about 90% of the adjustments that you can do to the pedals, you can do without tools uh, or with just a key that they provide you. Uh, nice. you, don't, you don't have to unscrew things and take things apart to switch out bushings and things like that. Uh, to change out the bushings, uh, you can get their performance kit, and you're you're literally turning a thumb screw that releases the pressure and you preload off the uh, uh, the, the stack of bushings, uh -huh. and then you push on them and they pop out, and the whole thing pops out. You switch out to to the really? that you want, you snap them back in, you, uh, you know, turn your preload to whatever you like, and you're ready to go. Um, if you want to adjust the spring tension on the gas pedal, they provide you a little key. You insert the key into the, the right spot, and you turn it to one of four different positions, and that changes your the, the spring tension on the on the gas pedal. Amazing. Uh, same for the clutch. Uh, so a lot of those adjustments you can basically do by hand or uh, with uh, a little key. It's, it, it's kind of a funny shaped little wrench that they provide you just so that you can get into those tight spots and be able to turn uh, sure, sure. The, the different settings but unlike other pedals you're not having to take an allen wrench and unscrew things and pull the screw out and then you know things fall apart and you have to kind of get everything back together it they've done a really nice job of that uh there are a couple of adjustments that you do that with but those are the types of adjustments that you do once and and you never touch again like setting the angle uh, of the pedals. 
So you know, oh, if, you sure. ever, if you have a rig where your your seat is a bit higher and you're sitting up above the pedals a little bit, you want to angle them back. Uh, so that adjustment, you know, does require uh, an Allen wrench and a uh, and a little box end wrench to remove the screws and, and reposition it. Okay. Things like that. But er, other sure. than that, yeah. But other than that, uh, you know, once you have the positioning of your pedals, things like the uh, the range of motion, the the tension on the springs, tension on the bushings, things like that. Uh, they're all done without tools. It's and, and, and they're just they perform really nice. Of all the load cell pedals, and these are load cell. Okay, you know, I was going to ask you. Yep. It's a load cell based brake, um, but it performs really well. It performs on par uh, with hydraulic uh, pedals. Really? My goodness. Hydraulic pedals have always uh, had an edge over load cell. Yep. These they they've managed to. Uh, to, to make it function. That's Just that perfect. Well. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, re really nice set of pedals. Um, so ergonomically designed for the sim racer, user friendly, easy maintenance. I mean, what a what a great uh, and and I and the price point is nice too. So I mean, it's it, it's really a win win. Yeah, yeah. They're they're at, they're at a competitive price point. Made in Portugal, not. Not China or anything like that. Sure, um, sure. And Sim is a Portuguese company. They're they're not a name that uh, most people have heard in the Sim industry. In the, right. In the, in the in our you know gaming industry. Of course, because, right. Um, yeah. Oh, I've been told uh, Rick Mo Rick Mo Tech Two was disqualified. Can you? Oh, I can take care of that. Stand by. Put him back in the race. So, sorry to interrupt there. Um, where were we? I lost my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about... Uh, oh, M -Sim. M -Sim. Yeah, uh, M -Sim the MSAM. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, yeah, they, they make high-end, full turnkey simulators. That's what they've been making for years. Right. Um, they make the official Lamborghini Super Trofeo uh, license simulator. Okay, um, gotcha. Just, you know beautiful uh, piece of equipment that they've designed. Um, so it's a full motion sim. Um, e everything is concealed and integrated and, you know, beautiful paint job on it. it it's just, it's a work of art. Uh, wow, nice. So usually ab above the reach of, uh, you know, us normal sim racers. The average, average Joe's. Average yes. Joe's sim <laughs> racer. Um, yeah, yeah. But they, yeah. But they decided to, um, you know, dive into the, uh, the the gamer segment and, yeah, uh, sure. and, they've, and they've stepped into it with pedals um, and you know they, they've been using a different brand of pedals I'm not going to name them but you know feel free to go to their website look at the pictures of their S certainly sim and yeah, right, you may right. recognize what pedals are in there yep. uh, and, and they decided to that that was what needed the most improvement uh, to start off with Gotcha, really gotcha, nice. To, to replace those with a design of their own. But okay. Yes, it's, a, it's a really nice set, and they, they've got some nice accessories for it. Um, it, it just, it's a really nice set of pedals. We have them on the website. We have them in stock. Um, and, yeah, like I said, they, they work really well. They have their own yeah. software for um, calibrating them and dialing them in. Uh, so just really nice uh pedal that they put together yeah that's amazing i, I myself i'm gonna have to research those a little more i'm, I'm always trying to keep keep up on all the latest and, yeah. and greatest and and uh i believe you had shared with me a little bit on them you know a couple weeks ago and and uh, but yeah that's uh yeah what a what a great design it, it's just really wonderful to see yeah. you know so, the, the investment being made into the sim industry yeah so they they're mounted on rick Moltec one I don't know if they're in view of the camera. Ah, okay. Yeah. I'd have to get over there and. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I can't I'm see it action. from here either. Yeah. Okay, I'm away from the action to uh, be able to talk to you in peace and quiet. Yeah, <laughs> no problem, no but, uh, problem. Well, Frank, we do appreciate you uh, chatting with us and, and bringing us up to speed on on the, the, the latest buzz and headlines out of Rick Motek. Sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. We're coming down to our, our last couple of minutes here of qualifying. Uh, do we three have minutes, anybody? Three minutes remaining in qualifying. Three minutes. Do, do 
we have anybody that uh, uh let's see we have uh, uh we're taking the top 16 so you top have a driver that is p18 uh the driver in the rick motec three rig is two spots out of the bubble there okay we'll keep yep. an eye on that see if yep. we can get him into yep final race Yep, see if they can make it in here. Jake White Rowell still not able to get a lap time in. Chris Generelli uh, has not laid down a lap yet. Joseph uh, Anacholi is in. He uh, he laid down a 123.644, putting himself P17 just outside the bubble. P16, Blake Northcutt, 122.841, finds him on the bubble. Joseph uh, Anticholi and Northcutt going at it there to try to get into the top 16. Under two minutes remaining here. Well, Frank, we do appreciate you putting this event on uh, every month. And, and you and I need to figure out exactly when we started this, because I think we're getting close to our five-year mark there, buddy. So I know it was in October. October. That's what I thought too. Oh, I announced that earlier. Yeah. I just have to look back and see October of which year. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it was 17, but. I want to say it was 17. Um, yep. Oh, crap, crap, crap. All in right. fact, okay. yes, I'm I'm 99% certain it was, 20, it was 2017. Okay. My goodness, Lil. Look at that. Coming up on five years. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. And by the skin of our teeth, P10. Ah, <laughs> Sean Cole in that number 39 Sim Pit machine coming in with a 121.693. That's going to put him up in the top 10. Nicholas Riceapudo. Rice Pudo, I think is his last name. I hope I didn't butcher his name. He is at the top of the board, just three laps in. A 120.494. 120.594 at the top of the board. That drops Evan Peichel back to P2 with his 120.51. Now, Brian Kynkotter has moved up the board just a tad to a 120.582. He's not sitting far off of our pole sitter or pole position tonight. Cameron Martineau, of course, right behind him. We knew he would be sitting right close to the top of the board uh, with a 120.612. Boy, Evan Peichel struggling there. We see him going off track there at turn one. Joe Antonio up to P7. Anthony Morano up to P6. Corey Allen and David Clymer find themselves at P9 and 10. Here we go. Uh, Robbie Unser looks like he may have just gotten in there. All right, drivers, we are taking the top 16. Only the top 16 grid, please, for race one. Just the top 16 drivers. Uh, fuel drivers, you should get away with about eight, nine gallons. Should 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 be plenty. Again, top sixteen grid only. How long is the race? Fifteen minutes. <clears throat> All right, drivers, we are down to a minute. One minute remaining before we deploy. Will be a full pace lap this evening. Top 16 drivers only. Top 16 drivers only. Well, there's Good someone luck, behind me, and I know I'm 16th. Kevin. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, there's a few cars behind me, actually, now that I look in my mirror. Yeah. Uh... Not understanding. All right, drivers, top 16 on the grid only. It looks like we have a couple of drivers there beyond the top 16. Only the top 16. Golly, my mic's not working again, Dan.
Only the top 16 cars should be on the grid right now. If you're not in the top 16 from qualifying, please exit the grid. Yes, top 16 drivers only. Top 16 drivers. Let's deploy single file. Deploy single file, drivers. There will be no brake dragging. You guys are welcome to uh, uh, scrub tires to get your tires heated up. There will be no more tiber scrubbing once we pack up and pair up. You'll get the pack up and pair up call coming out of seven. How's yes, it was fixed, yes. Uh, David's supposed to be ahead of me. We are single file. I don't know. Rick Motek 2 is on behind me. And he's... Right. Yeah, and you're P16. Yeah, I think we've got a couple of drivers. That's all right. They'll, they'll get dropped out into the next one when we go to 12 cars. They won't have a choice then. It'll eliminate them. Watch the field coming out of six here as we on our pace lap. Drivers, we will go on iRacing Green. We will go on iRacing Green. Maintain your pace speed once the pace car has dropped off. They don't start on the back chute, do they? No. All right, drivers, let's pack up and pair up. Pack up and pair up. And pull sitter, let's maintain pace car speed once the pace car drops off. Hey, you You're probably the last chat I'm going to see as we go green here. It'll be a 15-minute sprint race. There will be no cautions, drivers, no cautions. So let's be respectful out there. We've got a large field here. Drivers, let's keep that field packed up and paired up tight as we come over the hill here and prepare for the start. Stand, stand by for green, drivers. Green, 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 green. Here we go. The field coming down into turn one. The 32 of Nicholas Rice Puto managing the field well as he heads down into turn one with Evan Peichel from Geotastic right behind him as they head up the hill. Nice job through one. Looks like everybody fared very well through there. 32 coming through turn three. Now they're taking the four to the left. Single file as we find them heading down through the S's. Like a snake, there they go. Beautiful, beautiful scenery here as we see all of these beautiful Porsches heading up out of five as they take the short shoot down to the double right-hander to head onto the backstretch. 32, the 15, the 98, all lined up beautifully. Brian Highcutter in the 05 and the 16 of Oldest Butelli sitting back there in P5. And we're inverting the top seven for the second oh, race. And some of these drivers may not mind sitting back there and holding down that position as we watch our leader trying to break that draft a little bit, get some separation on the rest of the field. I don't think he realizes he's got some heavy hitters right behind him. That geodesic machine of Evan Peichel, very talented driver. Great to see him out coming from the Extreme Motorsports Rickmatech World Challenge. Have been having great success over there in that series in the past. Good to see him out here tonight. That 05 machine back there of uh, Brian Highcotter sitting P4, just biding his time. Two sprint races tonight. First race here is doing nothing but setting the field for the second feature event. Back down through the S's here. Very difficult coming through here, especially on those cold tires. Trying to get that back in to settle down as they come up out of five here. A lot of undulation there. You can see the cars just getting shaken around. Drivers try to manhandle them through that exit. To this double right-hander now coming up the hill into that very blind entry of seven that we talked about earlier. Such a difficult corner to get right. It kind of wraps tight around coming off the exit. Not a lot of track out room. You got to use the curb, but getting that car placement is not easy. 
Here we go. Evan Peichel now taking an inside run on that 32 as they head down towards 10 A and B, the famous 10 A and B chicane. 160 plus mile an hour as they come down into this heavy break zone. All the way down to 60, 70 miles an hour as they come wrapping through those corners side by side now for P2. Battle here between the 98 and the 32. Cameron Martineau. Nicholas Rice Pudo going at it now. Brian Highcotter takes advantage of their battle. Tries to get to the inside of the 32. Not able to get it done. He tucks back in behind us. They head up the hill All right, John. one more time into that very tasty. Wrapping right, 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 left, right, left. Here we go. Back through four. Back to the left now. And we'll head I down into the S's kept. of five. Top six cars now starting to get a breakaway train on the rest of the field. Watching Cameron Martineau now trying to not let that geodesic machine get too far out there. Once that draft is broken, it's going to be very difficult find that slipstream again Jesus. they need a, they need to be within about a second point three one point three seconds to really start filling that slipstream Again, 160 plus miles an hour as they come down that hill heavy on the brakes well if it was nighttime we'd see those rotors are glowing Head back through the field here a little bit. We see Brian Highcotter still holding down P4 that front three now starting to break away a little bit on Brian 16 car trying to hold on to uh, Ryan back there. And then the 42 car, of course, of Corey Allen, who's had just a tremendous run in practice tonight, was sitting up there in the top five in the practice times. Having a good run now as we see him fighting his way down through four. Sitting in a good position, though. This, this puts him on the front row for the second race as we will invert the top seven cars. The top seven cars will be inverted, meaning the driver that wins this first race will start P7 for race two. David Clymer now coming around uh, turn seven. John Cole in that number 39 cent pit machine. Boy, no surprise there to see him on the heels of Clymer. <laughs> These two just, I don't know, they, they must have went to the same driving school when they were young because they sure produced the exact same outcome at about every one of these events. Back just a little ways here, we find the 23 car. Careful, Luisi. Careful in that 23, really trying to, to hang tough here because this is going to put him P9. He'll, he'll be starting P9 for, for race two based on his finishing position as he stands right now. Ironically, the P30 is right behind him, Blake Northcutt. Having a good run here. This is putting him about P10. Oh, and, of course, we find uh, Anthony Morano Jr. sitting behind him. Joe Antonio not far back in that number 31. Our Max Pappas Innovations machine here. Come on, Cole. Going back just a little ways, it uh, looks like we had a little bit of trouble uh, that uh, pushed uh, these drivers back. The 14 car, of course, uh, ha having a little issue there. Juan Michelina, uh, John Hill, of course, right behind him, uh, having some early trouble. And Robbie Unser, I heard him uh, grumbling under his breath earlier. I think Robbie had a little bit of tangle early on. Looks like we do have one of the uh, simulator machines, the uh, Frank Rico machine. Uh, that driver uh, down at the open house there in Miami, he managed to get himself into this final event. He's sitting right now. There, number 26. That's John Hill, actually, the number 26. Here comes Robbie. Unfortunately for Robbie, gosh, boy, he's just had not had a lot of luck in the last couple of uh, these events. Last month, Robbie uh, 
a little under the weather, not able to make it, but uh, great to have him back tonight, but not great to see him having some early trouble in our event. Let's head back to our leaders here. That geodesic machine still holding on to the lead there, that number 15. Looks like uh, Cameron Martineau still holding on to uh, P2, and right on the heels is that Nicholas Rice Puto. My gosh, that guy just came in here on fire, ran three laps, and went right to the top of the board. Great to see Nicholas. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of uh, having his presence in any of our Hot Lap Hump Day challenges, so uh, great to see him coming out and joining us here this evening. Quite a field of cars we had tonight. Nearly 35 uh, drivers coming out to join us this month. Definitely a sign of the times that summer is starting to fade away for 2022. Oh, wow. The heat is coming on. That geodesic machine is feeling the pressure. Evan Peichel, man, oh, man, these guys are climbing right up the back of them. Cameron Martineau, it's about time for him to start making his way to the front. Cameron, one of those drivers that just always has poise out there on track really has the ability to, to, to maintain good composure. Uh, you see him getting a little bit loose there, but you can see he didn't overcorrect. Just brought the car right back underneath of him. Maintained his position there. Knows how to let those tires cool back down and get the machine back underneath of him. Take a couple deep breaths, get your composure, and get right back into the throttle. Well, we're seeing a little bit of gap now to... Uh, fourth place here as we look back uh, Brian Highcotter really trying to stay in that slipstream now he's fallen back just a little bit we'll see if he'll be able to uh, make up that ground here of course the other driver that's fallen off the mark here is uh, that 16 doing well though Aldous Butelli he's really uh, doing everything he can to hang with those top four cars but uh, he certainly has lost the slipstream at this point but you never know those top four may come back together and start battling, and we've seen time and time again where the drivers back here running by themselves are able to regain some of that gap enough to get back into the slipstream, and that's all you really need to do to uh, get yourself sucked back up to those drivers in front of you. I believe I see uh, uh, David Clymer back there. Is that, uh, is that no, a Corey Allen in the 42 there? Uh, Corey's still uh, holding down a good spot there, but I think Joe is actually starting to, uh, or I mean, Climber rather, starting to make up some time here. Uh, uh, he certainly is. He's actually, uh, yeah, he's, he's lap times. So Climber. And what he does best, but I'll tell you what, you know, nothing can be done with Climber without seeing that orange and blue car in his mirror. That must get old for David. Being Sim Pitt staring at him at all these events. Me, Climber, and Alan have been in this little train for quite some time. Really pretty evenly matched. Yes, yes, absolutely. Here we go. Here's the front four again, battling it out. Aaron Martineau trying to make the move on Evan Peichel down through turn 12 there. He takes it wide, trying to give room. He does get the pass done, but here comes the 32. That's what happens when the leaders start battling. You start seeing the other competitors taking advantage of that time that's lost. They start creeping right back up there. Just as I mentioned, the four cars are right back together again. Ryan Highcotter, well, he's had a little bit of experience out there in the racing world. He knew for sure that these guys were not going to stay settled in that train, and he was going to be able to suck right back up to them here the moment they started jostling. You'll notice that train is happening again. Cameron Martineau, uh, well, I think he just said, you know what, uh, Tired of playing tiddlywink, so I'm going to start stretching out a little bit of a lead here. Let's see if he's able to open up that gap and uh, stretch it out on Evan Peichel. He certainly has. <laughs> he felt a little charitable. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we'll see him come back together again. I can just about guarantee it. It will happen for sure. These four guys run pretty much neck and neck every time they're out on track together. So, uh, yeah, they've, they've got themselves a stretch on the rest of the field. We'll see how things play out uh, as it develops. As we're down just under three minutes remaining, just under three minutes remaining.
Beautiful skies here, nice weather today, 76 degrees in the ambient temperature. Here at Road Atlanta, they are dealing with pretty high track temps, up around a buck 10, buck 12 now, 112 degrees, uh, somewhere, somewhere in that area there. There we go, those four cars starting to tighten back up again. We knew it would happen. Allen went around. Well, it's great to see two of the extreme motorsports drivers up front. I will say that. Proud to see our two guys uh, going at it here as they always did in the World Challenge. Evan Peichel having some great success over there in the Rick Tech Series. God, I hope I don't run out of gas. Uh, two cars breaking away now. The front two trying to get a little bit of gap separation now between I Cotter and Rice Pudo. As they come down on the front straight one more time to head up that hill into the blind entry of turn two and three. And I mean, it is blind, let me tell you. Back to our lead here. Get back over here. Take a ride here with the 98. Should be the final lap here. We should be on the final lap. See how tough it is to get into that turn seven. Come out and on of this back stretch. Got Evan Peichel right on his heels. You can bet there'll be a run coming down into uh, 10A here. It's the most popular overtaking spot at Road Atlanta. This will be for the win. The defend happens there. Cameron goes to the inside to defend the inside lane. He stays over there. It tight. Evan trying to do an over-under here. Coming up over 11 through the bridge. Now down through 12, Evan's going to stay right tight to his bumper. Not going to have enough momentum to get anything done as they come to the line. Good race. I'm showing white flag yeah, now. Yeah, white flag now. White flag now. Yep, this is our final lap. White flag now. White flag now. That was just a practice final lap. Yeah, practice final <laughs> lap. You betcha. It, it was a virtual fake practice lap. <laughs> I, I thought he was making his move, though. I thought so, too. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you we'll see it this time. This will be the last run coming through here as we head up into six and seven. Those double right-handers. He was closer last lap, but... Yeah. Uh, no, not good enough run. It's going to be tight. Here we go. Riding along with Evan Peichel. Boy, Cameron got one heck of a run coming out of seven there, Robbie. I don't know if he's going to have enough to get it done. Here. I don't think so. I don't think so. Looking to the inside. Cameron's not no. even going to bother defending because he's too no. far back to make a move. But if yeah, Evan's smart, over. he'll get a good run here. Here he There's comes. Nowhere to up go. over the hill. If Cameron defends the inside, he will have nowhere, nowhere to go. To go. You're nowhere right. Nowhere yep. Boy, Evan had a nice little run. Oh, counter steer. That was good. Oh, good race. Good race. Yeah, Boy, that was finish. a beauty. That was a beauty. Evan did a great job. Yes, and he I like that he was very smart yeah. about. He could have taken a couple shots, but he was really good about yeah. not taking them. And yes, he was. Yep, fantastic. Up. Great, great job out there. That was a pretty good run. Leaders coming around here. Yeah. Drivers will have a five-minute warm-up between sessions. Oh, right. Congratulations, drivers, and congrats to our winner out there for tonight's first heat race. We will now bring up our feature, but that will be following our five-minute warm-up. There will be a five-minute warm-up on track coming up here momentarily. The session will switch over.
drivers will be able to go out, do any last-minute adjustments to your cars to get ready for the final feature race here this evening. Again, it will be another 15-minute race. Great job, guys, on that first one. Let's make sure that we keep that situation awareness up out there, guys. Kevin, you're crackling again. Okay, I'm cracking up, man. Not a warm up, it's a cool down. Is a what cool it is. down, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Good. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna step away. I wanna go right. to a cooler might... room, get a drink of something. My mic clear up. Yep, you sound good. Right back. In drivers, this will be an inverted grid for our feature race here this evening. We will invert the top seven. The top seven will be inverted for race two. You know what that means, guys? That's going to mean you're going to be fighting through some traffic there up at the front of the field. Let's be smart. Make good decisions. But he's after that beautiful Rick Motek t-shirt tonight. That's right. We'll be giving another one of those away. Of course, <laughs> don't forget... That winner in our feature race is going to get a ticket into that final championship in December. There'll be 12 drivers going at it in the third Wednesday of December of 2022 to win $500 in racing dollars at Rick Motek. Look at the uh, pit road here as most of the drivers are out on track. Warm up here. They have five minutes to get warmed up for this next... Top 12 drivers will be inserted on the grid. Bring the list of those drivers to you momentarily. Warm up. On, where do you think you're going to be starting here in our... Still gone. He stepped away, I think. Like he was tired or sweating or something. I want to thank all of you for coming out this evening. We do appreciate all the viewers. Uh, come out each and every month, the third Wednesday, for our Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge by Rick Motek. Be sure to visit rickmotek.com for all of your needs. And I say all because my plethora of is a joy to visit, visit back there in uh, Miami Lakes, Florida. Get in a candy store. Wheel rims to full simulators. You can test drive the simulators. And they, they have it all. Many, many brands. Metals earlier. Apis. Uh, if you're ever down in the Miami area, make sure you uh, look up Rick Motek. Pop over and give them out and say thank you to Frank. Frank, a big uh, big proponent to sim racing. A lot of time and sponsoring uh, not only the World Challenge, but the Classic Sprint Series. Oh, Cameron Martineau, the driver in our series tonight, uh, coming away with the championship this past Monday night. Uh, Rick Motek uh, Sports Car Series. That win. Multi-champ. Check out all the series Rick Motek sponsors over at Motorsports. Be sure to XMSRacing.com. XMSRacing.com, they have a full... Full list of series. Click on one of the buttons when you go to the website. It'll say, do you like to turn left or you like to turn right? So if you're an oval driver and you're racing, will you click 
left, and that'll take you into the whole series of oval champions. Click right. All the road series. Sports car series. R and GT4 class. Uh, now this fall season of the World Challenge. Bring our cars. Or Sean mentioned the Sim Pit uh, bringing some series back this fall. So uh, keep out for that. Cone, just a lone cone bouncing down the. All right, here we go. Over four uh, race back. Sim uh, rig, I hope. Oh, shit. No, I made it. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, good stuff. What am I doing here? Oh, you're starting on yep. the front row. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. Yo, were you calling me? Ah, uh, negative, negative. I was talking about you. Your ears were burning, That's I'm why sure. My ears were burning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're all good, buddy. We're getting ready for the big showdown. Yeah. Real quick, while I'm sitting on the front, I just want to thank my sponsors. Back, our seat, uh, the entire... Thank you all for uh, keeping the wheels turn at the Sim Pit as we sit P1. <laughs> May it be as long Stand by as for possible. Deploy. All right, drivers, deploy single file. Deploy single file. We will remain single file through all of the S's until we reach the back stretch. Coming out of seven, you'll get the pair up. Call at that time. There'll be no more tire scrubbing once we reach the back stretch. What's your prediction for the fight? Uh, I, I think Cameron's going to pull pull another one. I really do. I, I think he's going to be able to wait, make his way through the field. I don't think he's going to be able to be as patient uh, as he was in race one. He's certainly going to have to step up the pace a little bit earlier on uh, in race two here. He's got six cars that he's going to have to overtake. It's 15 minutes, approximately 11 laps. Take to... Uh, Get 15 minutes of racing done around Road Atlanta. 2.54 miles, 12 turns, 12 ominous turns. I don't think there's a simple corner here at this track. Watch all these beautiful machines rolling down into six and seven. John Cole sitting on the front row there. He's taking advantage of that uh, field inversion. Good to see that sim pit machine up front. Two of them, actually. Oh, huh, look who's yeah. next to you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how there fitting. Take a picture real quick. I, 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 I'm going to have to get a photo of this. The front row, Sean Cole and David Clymer. All right, drivers, let's pack up and pair up nice and tight here. No more tire scrubbing at this time, drivers. No more tire scrubbing at this time. All right, patience is a virtue in the second feature driver with this uh, this inversion here. Let's be patient, be smart. Love cars for our finale this evening. Bye, right, drivers. Let's pack up and pair up. Tighten up here. Come on over the hill. Stand by, drivers. Prepare for the start. Green, 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 green. We go coming down into turn one. Look at the cars fighting for position. Three wide back there for second, third, and fourth. Oh, we have a driver off track. It looks like that might have been Climber that went off a of turn one there. Hate to see that for him. The 39 car doing a great job keeping his composure, getting through these cold tires on this first lap nice and smooth. Oh. As we see a little bit of wiggle out of the sim pit. Oh, no, Sean hits the inside barrier, brings it to a stop, keeps it out of traffic. What an unfortunate start for the sim pit machine here tonight. 
Back to the front of the field, Brian Highcutter making a move to the outside of the 16, trying to take advantage of his starting position to get right back up to the front. Get that car out, oh, oh, the 32 takes a move to the inside of the 05 as they both come racing up off a seven. Now you see the geodesic machine, Evan Pike will try to get a run in that slipstream behind both of them. The 98 car of Cameron Martineau, our winner from race one, trying to go with uh, the geodesic machine, looking on patience. There's no patience here tonight. We've got a race to win. There's a t-shirt out there to grab. The 32, the 16, three wide, Brian Hunter gets tapped. Evan Peichel goes around. Uh, now we've got more cars going around. Everybody uh, is getting loose here, coming through 10 A and P. Oh, we're coming back to the front of the field here. No cautions tonight. We will continue to race here. 16, the 21, battling here, coming up through the field. Back to the front. Believe it or not, it looks like Cameron Martineau has found his way into the glory victory here this evening. He is way out front. Unfortunate luck for the rest of the field. We talked about the patience. We talked about what needed to happen here at the start of this race. Didn't even get through lap one before calamity struck. It's infamous 10 A and B. Watching Cameron now finding his way through six and seven. This is going to be a great opportunity for him to just try to stretch that lead back out. He does have Sherpa Luisi sitting back behind him. They're about two seconds back, just a little over two seconds. Right behind him is Aldi Putelli, Joa Antonio, Anthony Morano Jr., David Clymer. That is your top six here. Blake Northcutt, top seven. Corey Allen, your top eighth. Brian Highcotter, there's one of the drivers that got caught up in that mess trying to recover here. He's going to have a little over 12 minutes and probably eight laps to get it done. Let's see how fast he can get back to the front of the field. Cameron Martineau having a great time enjoying this beautiful real estate out in front of that Porsche. No pressure from him from behind. He should be able to just keep his composure here. Bring that Porsche home to a victory. We'll see how he does here over the next eight laps. Back to the 23 and the 16. They're battling hard. That's 16. Wanting to make a move here to try to start stretching his way to that leader. Let's see if he can actually get something done here heading up into turn six. Find their way out of five, and the 16 does go right. Aldi Mutelli looking for that move to the inside. He gets it done on the 23. Nice, nice pass textbook well the field starting to tighten up here the 23 the 31 all of them come together here joe antonio trying to make a run out of the front <clears throat> right in the slipstream of the 23 let's see what happens as they head down this back straightaway reaching speeds of 160 plus mile an hour we see climber now trying to recover back there he gets a pass onto the inside David Clymer in that familiar 242 pit sand pit machine coming up over the hill out of 11, now down into 12. That very fast sweeping right hander, uh, hander takes a little bit of curb on the inside. Boy, that can really upset the car there coming out of 12. You certainly don't want to lose it there. Find yourself kissing that barrier on the inside real quick. That happened tonight already. Boy, this group of five is really tightening up here as Climber is trying to bust his way up through this group. See if he can get up in the slipstream here on this next lap. The front of this group here, to the 23 and the P2 and P3 and P4 is what we're looking at here. All the way up to the front, you can see the lead now that Cameron Martineau has. He has Stretched it out now to 3.8 seconds over Aldi Putelli. Aldi doing everything he can to keep that car within a shot <clears throat> of the 98, but it's going to take a miracle to get it done. Hey, right, now it, coming into 10A, the 23 following behind. 23 is starting to feel some pressure now. 31 of Joe Antonio right on his heels. Those two ran a pretty similar pace in practice. It may 
be quite a race here to watch these guys battle it out for this second spot. Right now, uh, Aldi Putelli holding down a good run here. Uh, got a little bit of a distance. Eight tenths of a second over his competitors back there in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Really riding those curbs smooth, isn't he, Robbie, coming through there? Yeah. It's really, I mean, you've got some good guys coming up. Interesting if we're going to run out of time here. you got Brian's already caught now. Yep. Blake. Yep. Yeah, he's on the Blake now. fixing to be a thing. Yeah. yeah, Brian is not that far back. No, uh, and that was about a, nine, that ten was seconds. A messed up deal. They almost made it through there. He just got tapped on the back. Yeah, there, you know? yep. So terrible for Sean. That sucked. Oh, that he sucked pulled a me move. That's oh. a Robbie move. Yeah, you start in the front and crash in the first four laps. Yeah, four there quarters. you go. There, there you go. go. Yep, yep. I do it. <laughs> Quite the battle going on here, uh, certainly. That uh, was good. Blake did a great job of being aware on Brian there. Okay. Yep. yep. But now I don't know. 21 for Murano. Boy, yeah. Aldi Putelli is actually starting to stretch, Robbie. He's pulled that gap out. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's got about 1.3 seconds now on uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. What's does those guys yeah, really holding the Yeah, he's running the there. next. He's running a low 21. The only one wow. in the 20s right now is Cameron, though. You gotcha. Look at it. Gotcha. He's quite a long ways, yeah. Even Brian's running a mid-21. Nice move yeah. happening here. David Clymer gets it done on Joe Antonio coming into turn six there. That's a good one. Those two guys have raced quite a bit together. They run a lot here, and they certainly do it in the Hot Lap Pump Day Challenge. We see them here every month. And it doesn't matter what car combination we come out with, Robbie. These two guys, just like Sean and Climber, are always together. It's just yeah. unbelievable. There's some good guys here. I mean, I'm happy to just say I can stay on the track with them because, in all honesty, they're really good. Yeah, and especially yeah, in something like drivers. this car track combo, oh, where you know they're all really there. That was yep. interesting. I don't well, know what the big, hell happened big there. Mess there. The 242 got loose, uh, went in deep. He and the 16 both uh, racing oh, yeah. position there, or the 23 rather. Oh, oh. Whoa, the 23 just got hooked on the front straightaway. Not sure what happened oh, right there. Oh, that was messed up. Uh, Took out Brian be. too. Um, it took out Brian as well. I think so. Oh yep. no! Oh, gosh. that was messed up. And I don't, you know, I got to go back. I'm not that sure. was almost an intentional. Yeah, punt. take a look at that, Robbie. That, uh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to know what exactly happened there. I don't want to rewind because my film is actually got it. live. Let me go look at this for a Watching second. Watching Climber now closing in on that 242. Climber having just a stellar race tonight, really taking advantage of the unfortunate mishaps right. of uh, several of our leaders there on lap one, coming through A and B there at the end of the backstretch. Joa got a huge run on. On, oh, all right. The well, 23 car, I think it was. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure, it was, sure. Was, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. See, Cameron Martin. Bad racing. Yep. But not anyone's, no intentional punch. Yeah, nothing intentional. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, that's David Climber, man, he is going after P3 here. My goodness. What well, a uh, tough it, race on our camera crew here. Holy boy, mo it sure is. I'll tell you what, man. We yeah, we have been dancing all over. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Sean around right. the backyard kicking his dog. I mean, yes, geez. he is. Yep. Oh, here we go. That 31 of Joe Antonio. He's making his way up here. He's sitting P5. Really well I'll tonight. I'll tell you what. Cameron just not getting tangled up in stuff and getting through that mess early on. He's gone. Yeah, yeah, I had a I mean, feeling he was just going to walk away. There he is. Yeah, he's six and seven. He's six and a half seconds now up on P2. He's averaging a half, a half to a second That's faster than anyone else. Back. He licked really? his wounds. Is oh, the dog God. okay? I just oh, figured you were yeah, out there yeah, kicking the, the dog. Yeah, the dog okay, right. <laughs> oh, you came in. Now Brian's kicking him. I got it. 
<laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dog. Oh, I love it. Oh. That uh, sucked, dude. You pulled the Robbie move. Uh, Get horrible. out front, look like a stud for like three corners, and then crash. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so unfortunate. So silly. So silly. All I'm grateful for is that I was far enough ahead that I looped it not, and was off the track. So. Uh, oh, yeah. No, you did it in a way where no one was going to hit you. It was, that, I mean, that, it was just that cold tire dust it, that yeah, happens there. Yeah, just way too aggressive on the gas pedal. And you clipped the curb just ever so slightly in that. Just yep. I was kind of trying to make up for that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Gone. I know. And you had hand. really jumped in Watch front you. of everybody all bike, so you had a lot to. Well, and, really and have to that's push. the thing. I knew. I know better. Of of all the tracks to do that, like I like even cars that have good grip, this track really. Oh. Especially right where I did that. Yeah. Really test the grip on cold tires. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. This car. Oh, I, I so knew. That I don't know what like, it is. I, it's always been there. That undulation, like when you're going over. I just had to do everything I could because I'm like, oh my god, there are so many guys really fast that are like right behind me. Like Ryan. But you I mean, had left them like uh, four car lengths over the crest Ryan there. Ryan was in fourth on the start. I was like, oh my god, he's right behind me. Right. Right. Oh gosh. You ought to be done kicking your dog here in a few minutes. That was rough oh, for him, too. Well, if, it, if it's any reprieve, Sean, Climber's machine, decorated in sim pit, is doing really well. I, he is I, working I'm his way up. Yep. Very glad to hear that. It looks like yep. the leader is just gone. Oh, Cameron. Oh, it, that's, that's Cameron. He Yeah. We, we watch him do that in our series. <laughs> Later. Bye-bye. That's -bye. Yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Although um, I tell you, he and Mike Dam and Swanky Boy, they they had quite a battle in the uh, Champ GT4 Championship Monday night. It was three cars came into that race and had a shot at winning the title. It was. What do they run? What car did they run? Uh, this uh, Cameron Cameron runs the BMW. Uh, I think Swanky was in the BMW as well, uh, and and Mike Dam was in the Beamer. I think they were all in the. BMW. So how many what how many GT4s are there? In there? Uh, Twenty. To, well, how uh, many different cars? Oh, how many different cars? There are, we had uh, uh, four, four GT4s and uh, four TCRs. GT4. And I, how I many different, said, uh, like... I'm watching the battle for third And right manufacturers, now. there's... Uh, oh, go ahead, Sean, sorry. There, I, I think six I, manufacturers, five maybe. It's a battle between Murano, Anthony Murano Jr. and David and Climber. Climber. So that's yeah, two simple guys. Going. Oh, yeah, here, yep, here we go. Here we go. There they are, side they by side, it. heading to the 10 and 8. Climber making a good move there. Wow, he just about oh, overshot right, it, though. Right yep, yep, him. he's right on him. You got to get on the radio yeah. there, Sean, and tell him not to Andretti it. Take care of their <laughs> teammates. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. White flag. So right there it now, goes. A yeah. Huge mistake. Oh, bad time to do that. Go white flag. I was gonna say I don't know. So Climber's got to run. By a gigantic lead at this point, seven and a half seconds. Oldest sitting P2. Good job yep. by him holding that position amongst. Obviously, a lot of things have gone on in this race since I went away. And then Elvis we got that <laughs> battle, not too far back, the battle for 3-4, with Climber actually getting a, a, a little bit of a gap at this point. Yeah, yep. he's going to Toronto, but here comes the, the critical moment. That gap sometimes can be just the right gap. Yep. Depending on the run here. No. So again, uh, I, I don't think he's... Barely locked up. Yeah, it doesn't look like he got the run he needs, no. huh? No. Yeah, there's a 16 car. You can see that gap there. About, no, uh, about Climber seconds. killed him off that one. Then eight Come seconds across. all the way up to Cameron Martineau. There he is. Taking the win. Nice job, Cameron. There we go. That Very 98 impressive. car. Very nice. Bring it at home. Yeah, Bring he's gone. P2. And here's that battle for 3-4 with Climber getting the better. Oh, trying to get yep. to it there. Oh, Climber did get it. There that was a really good line. run with that Climber a, and Murano yeah. there. Well, I mean, that was some good stuff. driving and Go some up, good. Five. Yeah, Simpin, yeah. Four, nice, five. nice, nice. And there's Sherfill getting sideways. <laughs> nice. Six goes to Blake Northcutt. 
Yep. Nice job. Sorry, I kind of came in at the end and took your thunder there. Kevin. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right. Great job, guys. Congratulations to our winner tonight, the number 98, Cameron Martineau. What a showing he put on this evening, and he managed to get through all of the mayhem that happened there at 10 A and B on lap one. Uh, great drive by Cameron Maltrano. Another great drive by Dave David Clymer working his way up through the field there at the end. What a fantastic race tonight. Cameron, we're going to get you that Rico Tech Racing Simulators t-shirt, buddy. So congratulations to you, man. And uh, great race tonight. Appreciate each and every one of you coming out this evening. What a tremendous showing you all put on. We do appreciate you being here for the entire event. I think most of you, except for the few that came in very late, uh, what, a, what a just a tremendous drive. We do appreciate each and every one of you coming out. And we want to thank Frank Rico and all of the team down at Rick Motech uh, in Miami, Lakes, Florida. Uh, big thanks to them for all the work that they do putting this on. That's right. We did verify coming up, uh, coming up in October, it will be our fifth year doing the hot lap hump day challenge so know, that'll wow. be a big celebration in october we'll have to put on a very special event for that one anyway big thanks to sean cole from the sim pit for putting the broadcast all night tonight oh uh, man i don't know how he drives and talks and does all that at the same time but man it is great to have sean out here and we appreciate everything he does big thanks to robbie unser of course joining us as he comes out every month and man I, his schedule is well you can only imagine quite busy and a big thanks to brian Hi, Cotter, for everything he does and brings to the table. Brian, thanks for coming out and showing us some incredible racing skills, buddy. Thanks for being with us. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll hand it over to Sean Cole here and let him finish up the show. Thanks again, everybody. And thank you to uh, Kevin Ford Extreme Motorsports. I want to thank uh, I want to thank the, the two, uh, and there are more than just the two, but I want to thank the guys from Extreme Motorsports, not just Kevin on the broadcast, but a lot of the faster guys, to be honest with you. Uh, but a lot of the grid were guys from that league and that group of people. I want to shout them, give them a big shout out. And thanks for showing up uh, month after month. Same thing for the Sim Pit team and, and guys. We got a, a bunch of guys who represented real good, strong showing tonight by those those guys as well. So thank you to all of them for flying the Sim Pit colors and being part of our community. Uh, I guess my Kevin did such a great job thanking everybody. I want to thank everybody for watching and taking part. Be sure to put in your calendar the third Wednesday of next month will be the next Hot Lap Hunt Day, Hump Day sponsored by Rick Motepa. What I wanted to play, what I wanted to play was this. There you go. Uh, one more time. This is the Rick Motech headquarters. This is where they are letting everybody there in South Florida come in and try out their sim gear. You got a few of their guys have actually made it into the finals. So guys right off the street coming in and posting lap times good enough to win in sim racing. Plus they have a few ringers who are regulars at the shop or regular clients or customers. Rick Motech or guys who even work there. But I will give one more thank you. I know Kevin covered it, but I want to thank Robbie for taking part. I want to thank Brian for being part of the stream as well. We're working on getting a camera on Brian. That'll come soon enough as well. And of course, most of all, I want to thank Frank, Frank Rico for the great support for all of sim racing. It's not just this event it sponsors a lot of different leagues out there, produces some really awesome custom made for sim racing gear, as well as a North American distributor for a lot of products. You heard about that earlier during the show. So big thank you to Frank Rico for doing that. And uh, that is going to do it for this one. Again, put in your calendars. I want to see you out there next next Hot Lap Pump Day, third Wednesday of next month. Don't know the car. Don't know the track. They'll let us know minutes before the event. You got to adjust. You got a few hours to prep. You got to lay down your qualifying. And then you take part in the heat races, which are intense and make you sweat and are awesome. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this one. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.